Hello, my name's Bob Skena. I'm the CEO of Rage Incorporation, and I'd like to welcome you to the second annual World Music Benefit. Our focus in year two is to help UNICEF end the global pandemic. The impact on children around the world has had negative impacts that are, that are going to extend for years. So in a world that's so interconnected, it's critical that UNICEF and anybody else who can help can step up and make an effort to end the pandemic so that children can go back living a normal and healthy life. That's the goal here. And that's why we're hosting this event this year. So this year's activities are going to include musicians from around the world, uh, some that uh, participated last year and some new musicians and, and some new groups. There'll be interviews with various people from around the world. And as we all come together to help uh, solve this problem globally, it's important that people donate, that people uh, reach into their wallet and follow the link to the instructions uh, for how to make a contribution to UNICEF. This year, uh, just like last year, it's my pleasure to welcome the first group uh, known as City Rhythm, uh, local to Reading in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. These guys are spectacular and worth listening to. And when you hear them play, I think they're gonna inspire you to donate. Thank you.
Tall and tan, young and lovely The girl from Ipanema goes walking She passes me, I smile She doesn't see And when she walks She's like a samba She swings so sweet and sways so gentle When she passes, each one goes Oh, how I watch her so sadly How, how can I tell her I love her I would give my heart so gladly But each day when she walks to the sea She looks straight ahead, not at me She's tall, tan, young, lovely The girl from Ipanema goes walking she passes me, I smile, she doesn't see me. so sadly How can I tell her I love her I would give my heart so gladly But each day as she walks to the sea straight ahead not at me she's tall and tan she's young and lovely the girl from Ipanema goes walking she passes me I smile she doesn't see she doesn't see me she never sees me That's what all the people say You're riding high in April Shot down in May But I know I'm gonna change the tune When I'm back on top in June I said that's life As funny as it may seem Some people get their kicks Stopping on a dream But I know It won't get me down Cause my fine old world Keeps spinning around I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet A pawn and a king I've been up and down and over and out But I know one thing Each time I find myself laying flat my face, I pick myself up and I get back in the race, that's life, oh that's life, and you can't deny it, many times I thought of quitting, but my heart just won't 
buy it And if it wasn't worth a single try I'd hop on a big bird and fly I've been a puppet, a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn and a king I've been up and down and over and out But I know one thing Each time I find myself laying flat on my face I pick myself up and I get back in the race That's life, oh that's life Now you can't deny it Many times I thought of quitting My heart, she just won't buy it And if there's nothing shaking Come this here July I'm gonna roll myself up In a big ball And die My, my Anytime you call, I'm so available. Anytime you call, anytime at all, I'm still available. Anytime at all, don't need to bring a cake or a band home. You don't have to phone ahead Make no mistake I'm still the old standby And as you may guess At the old address Chances are You're unassailable And that we are through But what can I do? I'm still available Just like the first evening star You can trust that I'll be there Summer, spring or fall I'm in love and available Anytime you call You can trust that I'll be there Summer, spring or fall I'm in love and available anytime at
Someday When I'm awfully low When the world is cold I will feel a glow on Thinking of you You And the way you look Tonight Yes, you're in love with your smile so warm And your cheeks so soft There is nothing left to do But love you And the way you look tonight With each word Your tenderness grows Tearing my fear apart And that laugh wrinkles your nose Touches my foolish heart Lovely, don't you ever change Keep that breathless charm Now won't you please arrange it Cause I love you, love you Just the way you look tonight Alright Steve, let me show you a little something Show me baby So next from Moorhead City, Kentucky is Ray McLean and the Ray McLean Family Band. Ray is a personal friend of Regent and is a spectacular musician. I like to say that Ray is the Eric Clapton of the bluegrass world. Take it away, Ray.
Hello friends, I'm Raymond McLean. When Bob Skeena asked if we'd join Regent in this telethon for UNICEF last year, I was very excited because, um, you know, it was a great cause and uh, well, I wanted to be part of it. But my gosh, when I saw all the great talent and all the wonderful entertainment, the I mean, everything that went into this, it was just terrific. And uh, so when he asked if we'd come back this year and be part of it, I was so excited. And my sister Ruth can join me this time. Uh, I'm very excited about that. And uh, I look forward to not only the next half hour, but for the whole darn day. It's going to be a wonderful, uh, a wonderful day of, of, uh, of entertainment and music. And thanks to Regent for letting us be part of it. Thanks to my friend Jody Miller for doing the uh, camera work and the, and the videoing. And thanks to all of our friends at UNICEF and at uh, Regent for all the great work that they do. Some folks like the summertime when they can walk about. It's cold through the meadow green, it's pleasant, there's no doubt. But give me the winter time when the snow is on the ground. Cause I found her when the snow lay on the ground. I traced her little footprints in the snow. I found her little footprints in the snow. Long, long, God bless that happy day. She just stepped out, gotta be returning soon I found her little footprints and I traced them through the snow Cause I found her when the snow lay on the ground I traced her little footprints in the snow I found her little footprints in the snow Long, long, God bless that happy day That night I lost her way Cause I found her when the snow Cincinnati rag? Oh, yes. Let's okay.
Cindy Walker. Well, she certainly wrote some good ones. She did. Well, here's In the Misty Moonlight. Place is alright, as long as you are. 
Well, Ruth wrote a square dance tune. You want to talk a little bit about Come On Out Tonight? <laughs> oh, sure. We grew up playing for dancing at the Hammond Settlement School, where our father was executive director, in Knott County. So playing for country dancing so much, we naturally wrote songs about playing for dancing. Let's <laughs> come on out tonight. We'd like to sing a song right now that's a romantic love song from the 1800s. Uh, it's a song that I learned because Chairman Hal Rogers asked if I would learn to sing it, and uh, uh, we're very proud to do it for him. Um, it's a song that I understand was banned by both the no Northern and Southern military during the Civil War because it was such a romantic song that uh, that young men wanted to go AWOL <laughs> and return home. Uh, but it is a pretty love song. It's called Lorena. The years creep slowly by Lorena is on the ground again The sun's low down in the sky, Lorena Frost gleams where the flowers have been My heart beats on as warmly now As when the sunny days were nigh the sun can never sink so low A down affection's cloudless sky The sun can never sink so low A down affection's cloudless sky
dying of the day And hear the distant church bells chime To watch the dying of the day And hear the distant church bells chime
the stranger traveling through this worrisome land and I've got a home in that yonder city good lord and it's not not made by man well I've got a mother a sister and a brother who have gone on before and I'm determined to go and see them good lord over on that other shore that my sister Ruth could be uh, with us today. Oh, um, last year when we did this, you know, it was the height of the pandemic and, and we weren't uh, playing uh, not only in public, but even in the basement. We didn't yeah. play very much for a little while. And uh, it's so nice to have the opportunity to get to sing and play together again. Uh, Ruth, one of my favorite songs that you sing is the Scotty Wiseman's song, Remember Me. Absolutely. I love it. Scotty Wiseman wrote it for his wife, Little Bell. It's Remember Me. The sweetest songs belong to lovers in the moonlight. The sweetest days are the days that used to be.
Friends, thank you so much for joining us for the last half hour and for the whole day. Thank you to Rachel Corporation for uh, doing this telethon and for including us. And thank you all for your support of UNICEF. Coming to you next is the Pastor Robert Scott and the Holy Choir. Uh, Pastor Robert has been part of the Rage of Family for many, many years now. He, he's amazingly talented. He's a great keyboardist, vocalist, and, and truly a man of God. He's a special, special person to have in our life, and he'll be special in your life too. So please listen to him sing and play, and think of the children that'll benefit as you make a donation. Yes, we want to thank the Regent Corporation and also UNICEF for this opportunity to be a blessing to the youth and the young people around the world that are struggling. Right now, we are holy matrimony. I'm the Rev, and uh, Irv, can you count us in? Don't let the devil ride.
Don't let the devil ride. Yes, because he always want to ride in our thoughts and our minds because the word of God declares as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when we think that we're victorious, knowing that we are the children of the most high God, the keeper, the lifter up of our heads is blessing us each and every day. So we want to be a blessing to others. Bless your people, O Lord. Lord, we need your blessing. 
and take us home with you. of God in this place. Somebody got to know that God is everywhere at the same time. We just have to include him in on every situation and everything that we go through. And doing so, we just say, Lord, this is your will. This is your way. And this is your vessel. Have your way in us and through us today. Yes to your will.
in you, Lord, I know that I can trust. I cast all my cares on you, Jesus. Calvary, show you love me so much. Yeah. Oh, yes. To your will. To your will and to your a surrender, a vessel that he made for himself, but we continue to want to do our own thing. God says his ways and our ways is not the same. Hallelujah. We just came to say thank you for what God is going to do in the midst of this. Who's believing today? I believe that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think, but it takes some initiation on our own faith and believe that he's working it out right now. Even in the midst of your storm, God is able to bless you. And this just say, give him thanks. It says, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercies endureth forever. In all of our ways, we acknowledge him, and we give him thanks.
play for us, D. want to thank God for those that are struggling because sometimes we are the answer to what they need. Let us be a blessing to the multitude as we look out around the world. We want to thank God again for UNICEF and also for the Regent Corporation and also for this awesome studio, Morningstar Recording Studio. Amen. Hello, my name is Bob Skena. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Ragent Corporation. Ragent's involvement with the military began very early in the history of Ragent. Our first customers were the U.S. military, uh, starting in about 2002 and 2003, as I and the Ragent team are big fans of soldiers and those who defend our country. Uh, we, we've had a history of of trying to support the military uh, in multiple ways. We've flown home an uh, injured soldier who was injured in Afghanistan. We funded the memorial at Fort Benning for the 3rd Brigade soldiers who were killed in the original and first run-up attack into Baghdad. So over the years, we've hired veterans. We have a Veterans Day celebration where we raise funds for Pennsylvania wounded warriors. That's been going on for eight years. So it's really a cultural thing here at Ragent, uh, our desire to not only service and supply the U.S. military, to, but, but to be on the team with them as well and to support them. And we'll continue to do that uh, as Ragent moves along here. Uh, we learned about an organization called No Dogs Left Behind, and it involved an American soldier who had adopted a dog while in Afghanistan, a dog named Raisin, and uh, this Marine uh, was eventually brought home to the U.S. and his dog was left behind. It's a complex thing to bring a dog home from a combat theater, 
So this organization, No Dog Left Behind, uh, stepped up to, to try to accommodate. We decided to get involved, and for the last two years, we've helped bring two dogs back to the U.S. so they could be reunited with their American soldier caretaker. Ragent works with wireless technology that makes communications possible. We have a partner company that makes robot dogs. We have gotten involved with providing the communications backbone to allow robot dogs to be operated by an operator or to operate as a group. Robot dogs, while not quite as lovable as the dogs that we live with in our daily lives, are fascinating. Our commitment to to soldiers and, and how they live their life and the animals that support them in living their lives, that extends to how we treat Ragin' employees. And we uh, honor our Ragin' employees' desire to have dogs in their lives by letting them bring them to the office. I hope to continue our, our habit of having Ragin' office dogs be part of our life here at Ragin'. I mean, who doesn't love a dog? We support no Dogs Left Behind, an important organization that raises money and makes the effort to bring those dogs home from combat areas where they've been supportive and helpful in the lives of American soldiers deployed overseas. For us, that's an important cause and we're happy to support them. Jennifer Paradise, give me a little background on you. Well, first of all, thanks for having me, Bob. It's really a pleasure to be here. I am a regional board member for the New York region for UNICEF, and I'm also the founder of the Greater Philadelphia Committee for UNICEF. I'm not staff, I'm a volunteer. So tell me how many people are on the board. Well, the New York regional board, it probably is about two dozen. Okay. And then our Greater Philadelphia Committee is 15 people, 15 people and growing. So the committee in Philadelphia, we would love to grow it to at least the size of the New York Regional Board. Um, it's the type of thing where, you know, it, the, the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. And um, this region really has been largely untapped um, by UNICEF in terms of getting a presence uh, in, the, in the area um, and getting people who are really interested in child advocacy issues and in fundraising. It's really actually best to have people from all different kinds of backgrounds and um, career paths and, and everything. And what was it that, that attracted you or introduced you to UNICEF in the first place to want to be uh, functioning at a board level? Right. So I've, I've always had UNICEF in my life in that I was one of those kids who did trick-or-treat for UNICEF with the little orange box. So many people have fond memories of that. Mm -hmm. And that campaign actually started in Philadelphia, um, which is a fun fact for us. Um, and I just was always that kid that was really looking out for other kids. It, it didn't come from anything in particular. I think that's just the way that I'm wired. Um, and as I got older, you know, I kind of grew along with UNICEF and just stayed involved. So whenever there was, you know, a disaster somewhere in the world, um, UNICEF was my go-to to go online and donate. Um, and then again, you know, about five years ago, I got more involved. So as you got involved, what are some of the experiences you've had that, that uh, you didn't have prior so UNICEF operates so broadly. It has programs in um, almost every country in the world. And so just to have the experience of becoming more knowledgeable um, on a global scale is something that I really enjoyed and didn't, didn't have that opportunity bef before that. Um, I like to have impact at scale. That's something that appeals to me. It's like your business is at scale, you're global. And so that's something um, that's really been a great pleasure. And have you had the opportunity to travel with UNICEF since, uh, I since you've been involved? I have. I have. So four years ago in 2017, I had the opportunity to go to Zatari refugee camp in Jordan mm -hmm. and uh, spend, I think we were there for five days. It's about five kilometers from the Syrian border. Mm -hmm. And which is unusual. Most refugee camps around the world sit 
much farther back from the place of conflict. Um, this one sits right there. It's the second largest refugee camp in the world, at least it was at the time. Um, lots of families, lots of kids. Um, in some ways, though, just a really an amazing place for what has the structure that's been put in place for so that people can have a life and that kids can get an education and still have access to health care and be together with their families. And for you, what, what distinguishes uh, UNICEF? It's a vast world of, of people looking to raise money and to help in sure. many ways. Uh, sure. What do you find unique about it? But UNICEF's model is truly unique um, in the you know humanitarian relief world in that it's set up to partner with government. And that, that's just a very different model. So um, UNICEF gets invited into a country at the invitation of its government to work side by side on um, delivering on the goals for children that that country has set up and established. That is really the key to UNICEF's success is that the only side that UNICEF is on is the side of the child. Right. And they have worked to have a strong reputation, um, really an impeccable reputation over the years, so that pretty much every type of government is willing to work with UNICEF. And they're often the first um, non-governmental organization in and the last one out. For, for you and your relationship with UNICEF, what do you see long term? Yeah, well, so there is a project that um, is really close to my heart that I might be doing more with. What would um, that be? It's called Project Lion. And um, this is a, a project that was actually started by a fellow um, board member of mine, Pervi Padilla. Mm -hmm. So India has a vast issue with um, children who aren't living with their families, who are or orphans who live in institutions. And um, Pervy is just this tour de force person who created a project at UNICEF, again, in partnership with government um, at the state level in India. And they are reforming um, adoption laws and uh, laws about how the orphanages can be run. They're reuniting orphans with their families. And her program is now, it's only two years old. It's touching 75% um, of the orphans in India. This is like a, a million it's children. A million children. It's really, really impressive. And I'd love to do more and maybe even go to India and help her out on the ground. Given what's happened with COVID in the last 18 months, uh, I'm right. sure that's presented a lot of challenges uh, to uh, to the mission here. Yes. How have you found it to be yes. in terms of uh, supporting UNICEF during this period of COVID and the pandemic globally? Right. You can get involved in so many different ways, right? You could pick a country that you're interested in. You could pick a programmatic area that you're interested in. Um, there's like no shortage of things to get involved and help with. COVID, when it first, you know, a year and a half ago, if we'd been sitting here, I would have thought about UNICEF's COVID response as its own program. But what we're finding as the pandemic um, has continued on for a year and a half is that it's not so much that it's its own program as much as that it exacerbates lots of other ongoing issues, right? So it exacerbates um, education problems, it exacerbates getting other types of vaccines, it exacerbates malnutrition problems, um, abuse problems, right? So child protection issues really, in a lot of cases, um, sadly have gotten out of control because you have parents who are under so much stress. So it just exacerbates everything and that's why yeah. The the campaign to end the pandemic is so important. It, it is important. I think the you know, the global shutdown uh, of the global economy, I think, has pushed about 150 people who are million people who are yes. just getting on the ladder yes. of success and, and yes. uh, above uh, you know subsistence survival. It's pushed them back over exactly. that ladder. Exactly. Exactly. Which is such a shame. It's it, it's it the is. first time we're seeing kind of some reversals in the pro Correct. progress we've made economically. And, and then the children of those folks, you know, they they suffer that poverty kind of worse than the parents. So it's been a challenge and uh, I'm guessing the organization uh, you know, with its focus on ending the pandemic is probably pretty important. I think the goal is 1.4 billion doses, right? I think we're at 427 million, million 
in um, 144 countries. So one third of the way. One third. One third. Well, that's a right. long way right. to There's go. There's a long way to go. But, but you know, I think a lot of the kinks that were that needed to get worked out of the system at the beginning are, are now, th things are moving. Things are moving for sure. No one is safe until we're all safe. I was really relieved when um, UNICEF was tapped for COVAX, which is the like the global vaccine rollout response. Um, UNICEF was tapped as as uh, head of vaccine distribution for, for adults as well as for kids, right? I mean, we don't do adult programs typically, but that the expertise, it's like you want the adult in the room <laughs> to be in charge. And, and, you know, when it comes to vaccines, like they are the adult in the room and they have so much experience and, you know, that, that's what we need to do is put get the resources behind it and get the, the people with experience running it. And who's going to benefit from this particular fundraiser and any money that people might contribute at this time? So our focus for this fundraiser is the end the pandemic campaign. And so, you know, you could broadly say that everybody is going to benefit anybody in the world because as we just said, you know, none of us is safe until we're all safe. Right. But in in the short term view, um, you know, a donation goes to help kids all over the world um, with different with different issues. I mean, so some of this is vaccine related, but some of it is just really simple nutrition, nutrition food, right? Getting food to kids. I mean, we have more um, malnutrition and um, famine than we've had in decades, right? Which is just shocking. I think what's really important that I would love for your viewers to know is is how um, efficient the fundraising at UNICEF is in terms of how their dollars will get used. So anybody who gives a dollar, 90 cents of that, goes directly to help. It just means that the money that people give, um, you know, goes further. The goal is to help end the pandemic. You, know, you want to spend your hard-earned dollars effectively yeah. And people want to know that this is a, uh, something that is achievable, and it is. I'd like to introduce Giada Valenti, a long-standing friend of the Ragent family. She's very talented. She's from Venice, Italy, uh, living in the U.S. now. And she's wonderful to listen to and wonderful to know. I think you'll enjoy Giada Valenti. Ciao a tutti, Giada Valenti here from Las Vegas. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I would say nice to see you, but I don't see anybody by my phone. I'm honored to be part of this uh, meaningful event uh, for the UNICEF, and I want to thank uh, right away uh, Bob Skena and the Regent uh, group, uh, group for including me uh, and for always supporting events like this, and in my case, also for always supporting my music. Uh, I miss you all very, very much. Hopefully see you soon. I'm singing today a few songs from uh, here from my office in Las Vegas. Uh, no musicians uh, around. My piano actually is on another room. But I have uh, JJ who says hello. He's on the other side of the phone and he will be playing actually the iPhone where the music is coming from. I have prepared a few songs to celebrate love and the importance of having people uh, around us, like friends, family, the people we love basically, that we have been missing so much during the pandemic. Hopefully we are almost out of it. We are uh, able already to see uh, some of, our, of, of us. Uh, hopefully soon I will be able to see also all of you there in Pennsylvania. The first song I sing for you was written in 1961. So we go back in time by uh, American uh, singer and songwriter Benny King. And uh, Barry King said that it was inspired by the 20th century gospel hymn that was uh, saying Stand By Me by Charles Albert. And uh, it was uh, uh, actually the, the psalm was saying, uh, we'll not, uh, we will not fear through the earth be removed and through the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea. Very intense uh, thing. So, But it was inspired by the, the the psalm and uh, he had written actually the song for the drifters and uh, they didn't want it to record the song funny enough uh, so the story goes that uh, he had written the song the drifter didn't want it so one day in 1960 he was in a studio in LA and he had just finished recording his own album and he had like uh, some time to 
some time in his hands he went on the piano and he started to humming around the song and the people that were in the studio they said what's that that's a beautiful song I think you should record it and he recorded thank God he did it and uh, to these days uh, actually he's one of the most uh, um, he's a classic everybody uh, sing along this song so I wish you guys were here singing the song with me so let's go back in 1961 with this uh, uh, song uh, of course I hope you're singing there wherever you are it's called Stand By Me here we go 1961 and I wish you were standing here next to me. When the night has come And the land is dark And the moon is the only light you see No, I won't be afraid, no I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand, stand by me So darling, darling, stand by me Oh, stand by me Oh, stand by me Stand by me Stand by me If the sky That we look upon no, Should tumble and fall And the mountain Should crumble To the sea I won't cry I won't cry No, I won't Shed a tear just as long as you stand, stand by me So darling, darling, stand by me Oh, stand by me Stand by me, stand by me, stand by me Wherever you're in trouble, won't you stand by me Stand by me, stand by me. Stand by me. Well, everybody uh, in my circle of love was uh, with me during uh, COVID, and uh, I'm happy that uh, we, we should all be grateful that we have uh, people in our life. I was actually uh, able to go finally to Italy. Yes, I know uh, many people watching uh, love Italy. Uh, I was able to go after two years and a half to go and see uh, my parents uh, back in Venice, Italy, where I was born and raised, and I just came back uh, actually a little bit more than a month ago and it was wonderful to see the family and uh, made me realize how blessed and lucky I am. So I want to take you now for a brief second to Italy with a song. Of course, I, uh, I love to sing in, in Italian, so bear with me and come to Italy with me. This song is called uh, Meraviglioso Amore Mio, which translated into English if you guys don't speak um, Italian means marvelous love of mine and it's a song of a uh, recent year I didn't cross the oceans yet I just recorded myself uh, um, because I love the song and there is a line that I think is very powerful where he said uh, marvelous marvelous love of mine uh, beautiful like a painting painted by God with inside a painting our names I mean it's think is very beautiful and deep so if you like the song and you want to hear it again on my YouTube I posted a nice uh, video clip with the ballerina and the lyrics so you can sing next time with me so meraviglioso amore mio and we go to Italy for a second I know you Bob uh, Bob Skena loves uh, Italy and e da speak also un po' di italiano, quindi Bob la dedico a te e a tutti quelli che ci guardano che parlano l'italiano. Meraviglioso amore mio. Bene, sei entrato nel cuore. Però ci vuoi abitare, mi chiedi il permesso Ed io non so che dire, premetto che prima Alla parola amore tremavo 
Ora che vivo la storia più libera del mondo, che sento nell'aria il bene più profondo, a volte ho paura che crolli tutto quanto. Non è razionale, non lo puoi spiegare, tremano le gambe mentre ride il cuore, chiudi la finestra che c'è troppo sole anche quando piove. Anche quando piove Meraviglioso amore mio Meraviglioso come un quadro Che ha dipinto Dio Con dentro il nostro nome Meraviglioso amore mio Bisogna averne cura Stringiti forte su di me, così non ho paura mai, così non ho paura mai. Bene, facciamo progetti per questa nostra vita che ha tanti difetti e a volte va in salita ma in due la fatica diventa circostanza Non è razionale, non lo puoi spiegare tremano le gambe mentre grida il cuore chiudi la finestra che c'è troppo sole anche quando piove anche quando piove Meraviglioso amore mio Meraviglioso come un quadro Che ha dipinto Dio Con dentro il nostro nome Meraviglioso amore mio Bisogna averne cura Stringiti forte su di me, così non ho paura mai, così non ho paura mai. Meraviglioso amore mio, meraviglioso cuore. Quadro che ha dipinto Dio con dentro il nostro nome, meraviglioso amore mio, bisogna averne cura, stringimi forte su di te, così non ho paura mai. Così non ho paura mai, così non ho paura mai. Well guys, I hope you like this trip to Italy and now we come back to the United States. 1931, I make you swing a little bit. Here we go. you see I'm not good without you take my lips I wanna lose them take my arms I'll never use them your goodbye Lift me with eyes that cry How can I get along without you? You took the part The once 
was my heart So why not Why not take all of me Just a mess without you Take my lips I wanna lose them Get a piece of this size I'll never use them Oh, oh, and your goodbye Left me with eyes that cry How can I ever make it without you? You know you got the part That used to be my heart So why not? Why not take all of me? Oh yeah, this swinging uh, makes me uh, make me miss all the the swinging back with uh, with Spina with uh, Bob Spina there there in uh, Pennsylvania. I don't know, maybe they are part of this uh, marathon of music today, guys. All the big band there. I hope to see you guys soon, and also all my people from um, down in the south, of course, in Kentucky. I'm sure they have a Ray Raymond. If you're watching, I'm sure I'll see you later. Well. I like to sing this uh, song. This one was 1931, but I also like to write my own music. And um, during COVID, actually, I um, I pick up the pen again to write more and more songs. And while I was doing this live streaming to keep myself company and to my fans, my circle of love out there, uh, I started to sing this song that I'm going to sing for you now that I wrote a few year back, years back. And uh, when I wrote this song, of course, uh, maybe 10 years ago, my circle of love was... Uh, not as big as now, it was uh, my family, my mom, my dad, and uh, all my friends uh, back at the time in Europe. And now I live in the United States, uh, New York City for 11 years, and now uh, two years in Los Angeles, now three years here, almost three years here in Las Vegas. So the circle of love got very big, and during COVID, uh, it got even bigger because, well, I was singing, I mean, more people were watching. So uh, I sang this song, and everybody loved it, and I realized that um, I wrote it for a small group, but it doesn't matter. It's for all the people, and I'm sure you guys watching have the same thing, for all the people that are in our lives and we are blessed to have in our life, that uh, wh when we need somebody to, to cheer us up or to pick us up when we are on the floor, are always there. So I've never recorded myself. Uh, I was recorded by other uh, singers and in different languages. And during COVID, I said, okay, let me uh, pick up the guitar and uh, record it myself. And I started to sing. And so now we have a dream, me and my... Um, a circle of love that soon we're going to be somewhere in a theater and I will uh, add the song to my concert and they will uh, all coming from wherever they are. Maybe you guys can join me and they can sing it with me. Um, for sure, it's going to be part of my next CD of original music. And uh, for all the special people, my special people, my circle of love, I know many of them are watching and also for yours, if you want to make it yours, we all have that circle of love. It's called Every Time and uh, I'm going to sing it for you uh, yeah, for the first time, for the UNICEF and for Regent. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Here we go. It doesn't matter what life may put me through Whatever happens, I know that I've got to All of the good times Make it all worthwhile Now we know what we've got Together Every time I'm feeling lonely 
Every time when hope deserts me Every time I am low I know you are more than just a friend Always there Every time I stop believing Every time I think of leaving Every time I fall I call and you catch me in the end No need to worry We've got love on our side No need to hurry Lie back, enjoy the ride Take me to heaven And take me to your heart And we'll leave all the pain behind us And then we'll leave all the pain behind us and I know every time I'm feeling lonely every time when hope deserts me every time I'm low I know you are more than just a friend always say every time I stop believing every time I think of leaving Every time I fall, I call and you catch me in the end Every time Every time I'm feeling lonely Every time when hope deserts me Every time I low, I know you are more than just a friend always there Every time I stop believing, every time I think of leaving Every time I fall, I call and you catch me in the end No need to worry We've got love on our side Every time I want to thank also Ben Mauro, which is not with me here today, but he played uh, the track on the guitar for me. And Ben Mauro, of course, I just saw it. Uh, he was here in Las Vegas a few weeks uh, ago playing with uh, Lionel Richie. He's the guitar player Lionel Richie. He also moved to Las Vegas. Everybody seems to move into Las Vegas, so which is nice. So I get to work with uh, these kind of amazing people. Guys, um, it's never too early for Christmas. I, this is my last song, and I want to share with you something funny because I was in the middle of summer. It was June. It was like 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is uh, uh, 50 gradi uh, centigradi if you're watching uh, a good uh, European temperature. It was very, very hot, and... Uh, uh, I always love Christmas time and Christmas music. I've been doing Christmas concert. Uh, uh, I know some of you of Regent came actually when uh, before COVID, as uh, some of them that I did in uh, in New Jersey and in uh, in Pennsylvania. So. I was just uh, talking uh, with uh, people that always uh, play music with me. I said, why we don't do, why we don't record a Christmas uh, album? You know, normally you do it in the summer to release it in the winter. So I was here in my living room, 100 degrees. I was on the phone with uh, uh, Greg Field, uh, the, my producer in uh, Los Angeles. He said, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. COVID was lucky for me because uh, I was still in the middle of COVID in June and all the greatest musicians, all the musicians were not working so I was able to have uh, uh, available for to play with me some of my dearest friends uh, that were at home doing nothing he said yes let's do it so we went to Los Angeles we were able to go to Capitol Studios was the first the famous Capitol Studio Studio A where Frank Sinatra of course uh, and the Beatles were but anyway we were there and uh, my friends were free so I had Nathan East on bass is he plays with everybody, but he's now touring with Eric Clapton. And uh, uh, I had uh, Tarika Cooney on guitar, uh, two guitar players, so Tarika Cooney and uh, Anthony Wilson. They both play one with uh, Josh Groban and Diane Kroll, the other one. And they're friends of mine and they were at home. Nobody was touring. And on piano uh, from Miami came Shelly Berg. It's one of my favorite, favorite piano player and uh, arranger. And is the musical director of Gloria Stefan, another woman that I adore. And before you knew, so we recorded that one. Then we wanted to have some strings. 
And uh, I said to, to JJ, yeah, we need some strings, Christmas music. So Greg said, just for fun, actually, we said, what about we, we check uh, the Royal Philharmonic in London? Maybe they're also out of work. I was like, well, Hollywood is closed. Normally they play all the soundtrack for movies. So uh, Greg had contact with uh, Abbey Rhodes. They actually were open, but they had no work. So we were able to have the Royal Philharmonic playing with me. I woke up at six in the morning here in Las Vegas. We couldn't fly, of course, to uh, London. It was pandemic time. And I saw them in uh, live streaming for my computer. And I almost, actually, I did cry because, uh, I mean, the Royal Philharmonic, it's a, uh, it's the institute, the best of the, the the string, and they were playing my songs. So in nine hours, they they played fourteen songs, and they were conducted by Robert Ziegler, which is one of my favorite conductor. He, he, he's the conductor of the Royal Philharmonic in all the James Bond movies and uh, a Star Trek's movie, and it was kind of cool. I know Bob is going to love it to hear Bob Ziegler say, Buongiorno, Bella. I made Bob Ziegler speak some Italian at Abbey Road from Studio A where the Beatles had recorded everything. And it was kind of magical. So the album comes out next year because uh, we, we still needed to do some duets and stuff. But uh, we uh, just released uh, two weeks ago um, uh, a single from that album and we decided to uh, go with a song that everybody loves, uh, loves uh, around the holidays. One of the oldest uh, Christmas uh, carols. So I'm going to leave you with uh, that song. Hopefully, Silent Night, of course, Astro del Ciel, Noche de Paz. Uh, is existing in 400 languages. I've recorded only in three, actually, for my... Um, uh, album uh, God willing this Christmas that uh, is coming up in a month a little bit a uh, few days more than a month uh, uh, we are going to be able to be with our families uh, if everything goes well I will be able to be in Italy and to spend it with my family so I want to send God blessings to all of you and thank everybody and uh, Let's uh, let's um, have a Christmas time here. Of course, uh, I like the Spanish lyrics because they they say Noche de Paz, which means a uh, night of peace and night of love, and that's what I hope it's uh, every night for uh, everybody and all of us. So God bless everybody that was involved with this event. And here is my single. And if you want, you can of course download it, or you can go on YouTube and watch the video clip uh, or stuff like that. But anyway, here is. Uh, with all those amazing people and the Royal Philharmonic, the year is a silent night. Here we go. First time singing it, actually. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round young virgin mother and child Holy infant so tender and mild Sleep in heavenly peace Sleep in heavenly peace Noche de paz, noche de amor Todo duerme en derredor Entre los astros que esparcen su luz Bella anuncia Estrella de paz Christmas Oh, silent night Oh, Christmas light Es una noche de paz Una noche de amor It's Christmas night Silent night, oh Christmas light All is calm, all is bright Radiant beams from thy holy face With the dawn of reading Sleep in heavenly peace 
sleep in heavenly peace. Estrella de paz y de amor Sleep in heavenly peace Never too early for Christmas Actually I'm a believer that Christmas The feeling of Christmas should be every day and actually every day is Christmas in my life because I have so much love in my life so thank you so much for having me thank you Bob Skena thank you to Regent God bless everybody the people that sang before me the one that will sing after me un saluto a tutti un saluto a tutti voi dalla Pennsylvania qui da Las Vegas e vi lascio con un bacio e un abbraccio e do la linea alla Pennsylvania I think uh, uh, I, I think we are going to Pennsylvania anyway un bacio bye As COVID-19 brings the world to a halt, we won't stop. Across the globe, around the clock, UNICEF is tirelessly working to keep children safe, bringing water and soap, medicine and protective equipment to families and healthcare workers. While many people are forced indoors, UNICEF is on the front lines, just as we've been for over 70 years, through war, disaster, and disease. UNICEF has the world's largest humanitarian warehouse, sending supplies to the most remote areas, delivering life-saving help to children. What we all do in this moment will make the difference for millions of lives. We know we can do more together. UNICEF won't stop until every child is protected. Join us at unicefusa.org slash COVID-19. Next playing for you is Cliff Cole and Brian Pearson of Tachyometry. Uh, Cliff is an important person at Ragin. He's actually responsible for our manufacturing. Uh, he's also an extraordinary musician with a very unique instrument, which I think you'll enjoy. Please listen to Cliff and Brian and then donate on behalf of the children to end the pandemic. Thank you. After all the jacks are in their boxes And all the clowns have gone to bed You can hear happiness staggering down Main Street Footsteps dressed in red, and the wind cries Mary. 
Thank you. Um, this is uh, for the Ragent UNICEF fundraiser. The name of our group is Tachyometry. A tachyon is the particle that allows the warp drive to happen on, on Star Trek, so you know it's got to be real. So, um, this is Brian Pearson, and I'm Hello, Cliff Mike. Cole. And um, we're going to play, that was, of course, uh, The Wind Cries Mary by Jimi Hendrix. And we're going to do an original piece. This is called A New Day. Chasing the clouds away, chasing the clouds away. Chasing the clouds away, chasing the clouds away, chasing the clouds away. There's a new day dawning in the distance. The rain is falling. The clouds they part. The sun comes out, the birds are singing, and I'm thinking of you in the morning. Yesterday's thunder is fading away. The clouds are parting, it's a brand new Chasing the clouds away, chasing the clouds away. All right. All right, thank you. Yep. Um, next, we're going to do uh, another original piece. Um, this is one that um, I wrote and, you know, worked on with Brian, so I kind of think this has sort of become our song. Uh, we call it E Minor Variant.
Thank you. That was E minor variant. Well, next we're going to do a song that was written by Brian. Yes, this one's called uh, Pile or My Little Pile. It's kind of a uh, anti-consumerism tune. Uh, it's about being frugal and uh, taking care of what you have and wanting what you have instead of having what you want. Ready? Smile, you got yours and I've got mine. It's the American way to buy, buy, buy. Please keep yours behind this line. Oh, my little pal makes me smile. here yes we are <laughs> so that means you should have fun and donate too by the way <laughs> yes please donate to the unicef cause you know ragin is uh is making this this time and space available uh, for us to do our thing and we really appreciate that i'd also like to say happy birthday to ragin ragin just turned 20 hey happy birthday ragin yes and uh <laughs> you know in our industry startups uh being successful is not the norm. And uh, no, it, no, it really is true. Only 5 or 10% of startups actually make it and become profitable companies. And uh, my hat is off to, uh, you know, Bob, Paul, Dave, um, you know, the management team and everybody who works there and makes uh, Ragent such a uh, incredibly successful company. Okay. Um, well, I guess we're going to go into uh, Stella Blue, right? Yep, that sounds about right. This is our last tune. And uh, as a, again, we really appreciate being able to play. Thank you. 
sing from a guitar In the end there's still that song Comes crying like the wind Through all those broken dreams Vanished years Stella Blue Stella Blue When all the cards are down And there's nothing left to see Just the pavement left And broken dreams In the end there's still that song Comes crying like the wind Down every lonely street Ever been still a blue still a blue I've stayed in every blue light a cheap hotel can't win for try. Make them So that's by the dead. Um, we are tachyometry. This instrument that I'm playing, this big contraption, um, is called a hammered dulcimer. And who said that a hammered dulcimer can't be used in rock and roll, right? Yeah. <laughs> right along with a good old SG. Yes, and he's got a Gibson <laughs> SG there, and we've been having a lot of fun. And thanks again to Ragent, and please donate to the UNICEF. Please donate to UNICEF.
As to why Ragin decided to invest in Eastern Kentucky in the Appalachian region, it was just a bit of a bluebird in our life as a company. I was I was talking to a fellow who's a lawyer up here about our desire to expand, and he, he said to me, he said, have you ever considered Eastern Kentucky? And I said, well, why no, I haven't. And he said, really, you should consider it through the good offices of Congressman Hal Rogers arranged for me to make a visit to the area. And the people here couldn't have been more welcoming to me, uh, both at the local level, at the, at the political level, the economic community level. Our first stop was Moorhead State University, and I was introduced to Jeff Kruth at the Space and Science Center, and he gave me a tour, and I was blown away by what I saw in terms of capabilities from a physical perspective. I mean, the equipment and, and how that building was outfitted was really impressive. But more importantly, I got to see what the students were doing, and they were 18, 19, 20 years old, and they're tracking satellites for NASA and hand building satellites and doing hardware development and software development and testing and, and very, very sophisticated work uh, at a young age. And as I went around with Brett on my tour, I was continually impressed by the, by the people that I met. And ultimately, you know, any business decision comes down to the people. And what drove the decision to invest in Eastern Kentucky was, was the nature and quality of the people that I met then and have gotten to know since. The attributes that we really considered important and in general consider important are, are smart, reliable, trustworthy people. And as I got to know the people of Moorhead, uh, it became clear that those attributes exist in this community in abundance. Another element that's critical to any business is, is do people work hard? You know, do they consistently apply themselves across the workday? And everybody we've hired here uh, has met that standard. What we find with Moorhead State graduates is they're extremely well prepared. We've hired many from the Space and Science Engineering Program. Across the board, they're doing software, hardware, fabrication, testing. They come out of Moorhead as graduates, extremely well-trained in really all areas of engineering that we need. And so when they go to work for Ragent, they're, they're effective and useful from the first day. And of course, it's not just the engineering students, the, the other folks we've hired. They bring a, a background of intelligence and hard work. And with that, you can accomplish a lot, and we have. We have young people designing computer hardware. We have them traveling all over the world to support Ragin customers. This is a, a hidden gem down here in Eastern Kentucky. More people, both U.S. business people and international people, ought to come to the area, and they would do as well as we have. Hello, we're here with A.J. Jacob today from Brooklyn. Uh, A.J. has come down from Brooklyn to visit us here in Malvern, Pennsylvania. A.J. is a philanthropic officer for UNICEF. So welcome. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here in your incredible facilities, and you've been the perfect host. What brought you to UNICEF? What was that thing uh, that brought you to UNICEF and got you involved personally? You know, like so many of our supporters, I've, I've known about UNICEF from a very young age. I was born in India, and um, UNICEF has such a huge presence there. It vaccinates almost half of the world's children. And I've always known that if you want to make an impact in the lives of the world's most vulnerable children, UNICEF is the place to do it. So when I started thinking about where I really want to spend my time and my efforts, it really made sense to find my way to UNICEF and I couldn't be happier. And what was what was the, your first interaction with UNI UNICEF? So I actually started as a donor myself. Um, I was working with our program, it's called UNICEF Next Gen. It's working with young adults who are really passionate about the world around them and making an impact. Um, so I started by founding the UNICEF Next Gen chapter in DC. That was my first insight into the inner workings of UNICEF. 
And I had been really passionate about the UN and international development for some time. And I had worked um, in previous roles as a consultant working with other UN agencies. And when I saw the inner workings of UNICEF, I was so impressed by the fact that such a huge organization could have such a degree of nimbleness in terms of responding to crises. And that's tough in a large organization. What do you mm -hmm. what do you think makes them different in that respect? Regardless of what's happening in the world, UNICEF can get the supplies that are needed on the ground in 72 hours anywhere. UNICEF's motto is that we won't stop. And um, they're just nimble thinkers on the ground who are ready to do the work and think outside the box and aren't stopped by typical bureaucracies. That's interesting. I wonder if it's because uh, people feel it, it's more of a mission than just a job, whereas mm -hmm. a lot of other agencies, uh, maybe it's just work for people. It's extremely mission-driven. I feel so lucky to work with colleagues that really feel called to this work in a way that's truly inspirational. I feel so inspired by my colleagues every single day. And at the end of the day, the amazing thing about UNICEF is you're always reminded we're talking about children. We're talking about children that have not asked for where they are in life. You know, uh, They bear no responsibility for what situation they were born into. And I think so many of us feel really called to that and feel called to helping the world's most vulnerable children. You know, money, of course, is an important element of what we do uh, in in helping UNICEF. Can you tell me some of the ways that uh, when money's raised, how you use it? Mm -hmm. That's actually one of my favorite things about UNICEF. For every single dollar that's raised, 89 cents of every dollar goes straight towards helping children in need. And again, coming from the philanthropic world, I know how rare that is. I know that that efficiency is really best in class. And that's something that I'm really motivated by. We run a really lean operation with that in mind. You know, We try to be really responsible stewards of that philanthropic support. It's interesting because you you mentioned um, you know that there's the organization is nimble and people have a commitment to a mission and that eighty nine percent I think is a reflection mm -hmm. of that. What other ways can can people help UNICEF or contribute to UNICEF besides and in addition to money? Mm -hmm. I think in the U.S. one of the incredible things that people can do is really take on a leadership role as an advocate. You know, in the voting booth. It doesn't matter whether you're a billionaire or whether you're homeless. You know, every every person has that same level of equity there. And when we're talking to our leaders in Congress and um, how we want our tax dollars spent, that kind of leadership and um, advocacy is also really important. Um, the U.S. is such a big player in terms of how dollars are spent on um, in the philanthropic landscape. So. What's the rest of the world doing in addition to the U.S.? I think it's interesting because we're in a moment where we're, we're really testing the commitment of the entire world to true equity. And we're seeing that through our End the Pandemic campaign. We're seeing, sure, we can all talk about the equitable distribution of vaccines, but how much are higher income countries really willing to commit to that? And it's so interesting because with the pandemic, it's really true that no one is safe until we're all safe. Um, yeah. We live in a globalized world. Um, you know, the Delta variant that happens in India and causes the second wave travels to the United States. And, you know, as a global leader of an international company yourself, you know the impact on a global supply chain and that how deeply that can impact us as Americans. So we're really living in a global world in that way. And... We have to act as global citizens. It's been difficult, uh, you know, for the last 18 months because of COVID to travel. But where where has UNICEF brought you in terms of travel? What have you seen in the world? Well, um, I, I love being a global traveler, but UNICEF has been pretty cautious in terms of traveling during the pandemic is, uh, you know, public 
global health leader. Um, so I'm actually very excited that Regent is my first trip and the first trip of anyone on my team. Um, so we're, we could not be more excited to be here today. And it's great to have you here in person. Um, we just know it's been a challenge for everybody. Yeah. You know, and the mission stays, the mission remains. It's mm -hmm. just harder to do if you can't go see people. The thing that I'm most looking forward to is the day when we can resume our program visits directly on the ground because living in the US, most of our philanthropic partners are not necessarily gonna see the impact firsthand walking down the street. So I think that that's really our best opportunity in terms of connecting people to the impact that they're having. We know the long-term goals of UNICEF are to, are to bring you know health and benefit to children around the world. What are some of your short-term goals? Mm -hmm. I would say one of our short-term goals one of the biggest goals that we've had in terms of accepting this mantle of responsibility with the pandemic has definitely been to distribute 1.4 billion vaccines, COVID vaccines, in, um, in the first historic effort um, of an immunization campaign of this kind. And UNICEF truly does believe that no one is safe until everybody is safe. So we have to think at a global sp scale because that's the only way that we're really going to be able to address that pandemic. But at the same time, we want to make sure that addressing one global pandemic is not going to cause another. So that means that our immunization efforts for children can't stop while we're doing this work to end the COVID-19 pandemic. We don't want to see backsliding with um, immunizations for children. We've seen that save so many millions of lives, and we don't want a measles outbreak. Right, or know. malaria or something. Exactly. Like that, right. Other diseases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems that you know you're creating an infrastructure that that'll be and a, and a policies and tactics and techniques which will have use on a, on a long term basis Absolutely. in addressing other illnesses besides COVID. It's possible that we can leapfrog from this moment, and that's really a source of hope for me personally. Okay, given what's happened in the last eighteen months, what changes would you like to see uh, in how the world you know reacts to? this circumstance and what could be similar circumstances in the future? Personally, I would like this to put an end to us and them thinking, you know, us here in the United States versus those poor people over there. You know, um, I, I think that this pandemic has really shown us what a small little planet this is and how deeply, deeply connected we all are to each other. And an issue that's happening on the other side of this planet can and very likely will affect our lives here. And so feeling that connection to our fellow global citizens is something that I think that we're seeing that shift. I think, you know, even in, in the business world, we're seeing um, leaders realize what what the global supply chain means, for example, um, and how interruptions in one country can really affect that on a global scale. And I'm hoping that that will just increase the level of empathy that we feel around the world. We just see people wherever they live as just people. Exactly. Exactly. Very well said. Uh, as people hear and develop an interest in UNICEF, how do they contact you? How do they reach out? How do they get connected in, mm -hmm. in a useful, organized way mm -hmm. and actually help make a difference? We're always looking for folks to partner with. And anyone who goes to unicefusa.org can get into contact with us right away. Um, we encourage everyone to think big in terms of what they as individuals can do to affect the world around us. Um, I think that's probably the most inspiring part of my job. And I think just really thinking about the impact that we can have, we have a limited amount of time on this earth. How can we make it a better place? You know, um, So I think really reflecting on that and reaching out to us to, to be the change that you want to see in the world, we're always looking for partners to do that. Are there impediments? Are there challenges today, you know, hurdles that have to be leaped? What are those things that have to change uh, to help you reach those goals? Definitely. I think that sometimes I personally can underestimate the logistical challenges at play when we're talking about this global movement. 
you know, how do we get vaccines to a place that's not accessible by car? You know, do we have a plan for that? Do we have a plan for this global supply chain? What happens when we don't have a cold chain in place right now? You know, create thinking in a sophisticated way about these logistical challenges. Um, it's it's been the greatest challenge of of our lifetimes, I think, in that way. It's an, inter it's an interesting comment you make is there's a there's a saying uh, that the military has, mm -hmm. which is that civilians, you know, they kind of you know think about moving armies left and right around the planet, mm -hmm. where where officers think logistics, mm -hmm. like how do I how do I get ships, boats, fuel, mm -hmm. uh, food, right, right uh, across the ocean at the right place at the right time? And mm -hmm. basically, you're talking the same thing. It's food, right? Right. It's water. It's medicines. Right. It's vaccines. So it is a massive logistical challenge, right. which it probably doesn't appear to be on the surface, but mm -hmm. that's probably the biggest challenge you have. I think the frustrating part in some ways is that at at the very basic level, these are problems that we have the solutions for. You know, we know what the solution is to malnutrition. We know what the solution is to a lot of these preventable diseases. I think that's one of the things that really stirs a lot of passion for me. Um, a lot of these, a lot of the things that people are dying from around the world are fully preventable. So it's really a logistical and resource challenge in terms of how are we delivering those solutions because the wealth exists, globally speaking. So how are we going to redistribute that in a way that alleviates the most suffering? So you're saying it's the wealth exists, it's more a question of will. Exactly. Tell me a few stories uh, about how UNICEF has affected you and changed your life. I can tell you one story that I felt personally affected by. Um, I was born in India and I came to the United States when I was three years old. And um, recently, I've been working with a philanthropist, Pervi Padia, who started, she's the founder of UNICEF Project Lion, which is a program to help orphan children in India. And the project just moved into its second phase, which is, um, a $10 million program over five years to help India's most vulnerable children who are living without parental care. And of course, after COVID, tens of thousands of children have been orphaned because of the pandemic. Um, so we're seeing a huge influx of these children who don't have parental care. Um, and my aunt actually runs an orphanage in India, in one of these states that Project Lion is expanding to in phase two. And when my father told her that I was working on this project and told her about what support this project project is going to be delivering to, um, to Kerala, the state that she's working in, she started to cry because that, that work is so deeply needed. And it's been such a difficult time for all of us. Um, but for the world's most vulnerable children especially, it's been a very traumatic time. And just having that personal impact with a member of my own family, it, it's been something that's really special to me. So you have that personal connection here exactly. to that, and that, that probably lends a lot of weight to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, as we as we reach the end of our discussion here today, is there is there something you'd like to just you know end with and to punch and emphasize? UNICEF is so, so grateful to be partnering with you, Bob, and companies like Ragent, companies that work on a global scale, because we're talking about global problems. And we're at a historic moment where we're doing something that's never been done before in human history. So 1.4 billion is a hard number for any of us to truly conceptualize. Our brains literally can't think that big in terms of what 1.4 billion people really looks like. And it's going to take a lot. It's going to take all of us chipping in and mobilizing in order to get this historic movement off the ground. So I, I just really appreciate everything that everyone is doing here to support that. Okay, thank you. There it is. There's the big goal. So AJ, uh, everybody out there, step up and uh, help AJ reach that goal of 1.4 billion vaccination doses.
Now we're going to return to a second set of the great city rhythm.
away and I need to hear To clear my mind All of the time And baby The way you move me is crazy It's like you see right through me You make it easy You don't even have to try That ever happened to me Baby It's been a long day Baby You know I'm hoping I pray that you believe me When I tell you This love will Never fade away Oh because You are the best thing You are
or bad, or happy, or sad times of good or bad. Happy or sad. Wow. Just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you You'd be like heaven to touch I wanna hold you so much At long last love has arrived And I thank God I'm alive You're just too good to be true can't take my eyes off of you Pardon the way that I stare There's nothing else to compare The sight of you leaves me weak There are no words left to speak And if you feel like I feel Please let me know that it's real you're just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you in me when I say Take my eyes off of you Just too good to be true
springtime just a day away Cupid, we don't need you now, be on your way Cause I thank the Lord for love like ours that grows ever stronger And if all my dreams come true, I'll be spending time with you Got that good soul in my feet Feel that hot blood in my body When it drops I can't take my eyes off it Moving so phenomenally Room on lock the way we rock it Now don't stop Cause under the lights Where everything goes Nowhere to hide When I'm getting you close Where you move You already know So just the man But you, when you dancing Feel good creeping up on you So just dance, yeah oh, All these things I shouldn't do So just dance with me, yeah Ain't nobody leaving So, so keep dancing Can't stop the feeling So just dance, 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 yeah So keep dancing Ooh, it's something magical it's in the air, it's in my blood, it's rushing on I don't need no reason, don't need control We flying up, no feeling when we're in our zone Cause I got that sunshine in my pocket Got that good soul in my feet Feel that hot blood in my body when it drops Ooh, I can't take my eyes off of it Moving so phenomenally Room on lock the way we rock it I don't stop, cause under the light You when you dancing Feel good creeping up on you So just dance, yeah, yeah, yeah All these things I shouldn't do So just dance, baby, yeah Ain't nobody leaving So let's keep dancing hey! So just dance, 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 yeah Now keep dancing, oh, 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 oh. Just dance, 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 yeah Woo. Let's go, Jack. Uh, yeah. You can't stop the. Ooh. You can't stop the. Oh, you can't stop the. You can't stop the. We can't stop feeling. I can see but you when you dance, baby. Feel good creeping up on you to the stand. I shouldn't do so just dance with me Ain't nobody leaving so just keep dancing hey! Got this feeling in my body I can't stop the Got this feeling Ooh, can't stop the Got this feeling in my We can't stop the
seven inches from the midday sun I hear you whisper in the words that melt everyone But you stay so cool You're so school And it's just like the ocean Under the moon It's the same as the emotion That I get from you You got the kind of love And that's made you so cool Give me your heart Make it real Or else forget about it Well I'll tell you one thing if you would leave it be a crying shame In every breath and every word I hear your name calling me out I'm from the barrio I hear the rhythm on the radio I feel you turning up the world So soft and so slow Turning me round and round and if you say this life is good enough I would give my world to lift you up I would change my life to better suit your mood Because you're so smooth And it's just like the ocean under the moon It's the same as the emotion that I get from you you got the kind of love and that's made you so ooh, ooh. Give me your heart, make it real Or else forget about it daughter Adut, she was very sick and I was afraid that my beautiful daughter is going to die. She became very thin from uh, malnutrition. After receiving ready to use therapeutic food, she has greatly improved. I'm very excited to see Adut today lively happy and interacting. Malnutrition is not a life sentence. You can be treated uh, and it is also preventable. Now, she's in good health. That is why I'm very happy and uh, I thank God about that. Uh. Let's welcome Keith Sullivan, uh, a long-standing engineer at Ragent, an important member of the Ragent family who will be playing guitar and singing for you.
There's a little girl out lying on her own. She's got a broken heart. She's not the kind to take you down for long. She goes in place, see it small. And if she's coming and she's shown no more, she's heard no whistle blowing from the dawn. She feels like leaving and she don't know why. Without no bridges, she's trapped so high side. Don't cross the river if you can't swim the tide. Don't try denying living on the other side all your life. You were on your own And if you want you can ride my train Soon forget the reason that you're leaving Lose yourself and then sometime Maybe even save yourselves a grieving You can got that hold over me Long as I got your love You know I'll never leave When I wanted you to share my life I had no doubt in my mind Yes, for you Warm on right down the line Know how much I lean on you Only you can't see Changes that I've been through Have left a mark on me You've been constant as the brightest star The brightest light that shines Yes, it's been you Warm up right down the line Just wanna say, this is my way Telling you everything I could never say before Yeah, this is my way Telling you every day I'm loving you so much more Cause you believed in me Through my darkest night Something special inside of me You brought me into the light Threw away all those crazy dreams I left them all behind Yes, been you Warm my home right down the line Just wanna say This is my way Telling you everything I could never say before Yeah, this is my way Telling you every day I'm loving you so much more If I should doubt myself If I'm losing ground Wouldn't turn to no one else They'd only let me down 
When I wanted you to share my life I had no doubt in my mind Yes, been you Woman, right down the line to call that coat get my hands on warm the not my I don't know I keep panning it's in my reach it hangs on waterfalls down there's no gold in this barren Used to be a man could make his way With a barrel full of this black hole Half certain, you'd say It's in my reach, it hangs On waterfalls down There's no gold in this barren
Look at every angle, draw a square Find some nut you can instead, untie it in Watch me in the corner, hear the pair Under certain pressure, an ace diamond So run your fingers down my back Such a cool distraction It's in my reach, it hangs Waterfalls down There's no gold There's a line drawn and crossed By the banks By the way waterfall Falls down There's no gold In this barren Just a bartender I don't like my work But I don't mind the money at all I've seen lots of sad faces Lots of bad cases Of folks with the backs to the wall I need four walls Around me to hold my life and keep me from going astray. I need a honky tonk angel to hold me tight and keep me from slipping away. I can light up your smoke. Laugh at your jokes I can watch you Fall down on your knees I can close down this bar And gas up my car I can pack up And mail in the key And I need four walls Around me To hold my life and keep me from going astray I need a honky tonk angel To hold me tight And keep me from slipping away This honky tonk bar, but I'm thinking where'd rather be. But I burned all my bridges and sank all my ships. Now I'm stranded at the edge of the sea. And I need four walls around me to hold my life and keep me from going astray I need a honky tonk angel to hold me tight and keep me from slipping away It must have been an awful thing 
as someone did to you. They built this wall around your heart that I just can't break through. I can't erase, I can't replace the bitter for the sweet. And I can't find my way behind your walls of memory. If you want me, why can't I keep you in love with me? You say you're mine, but I'm not blind. I know you wanna be. And when you're holding me, no sweeter love can ever be. But when I'm gone, somehow I can't keep you in love with me. The worst mistake you ever make, the surest way to lose. Be to listen and believe the lies they tell to you. There is a way you can repay the one who put you down. Let me repair your broken heart. Don't leave it on the ground. If you want me, why can't I keep you in love with me? You say you're mine, but I'm not blind. I know you want to be. And when you're holding me, no sweeter love can never be. But when I'm gone, somehow I can keep you in love with me. After all we've been To one another How can we become Like sister and brother Darling I beg of you If our love must end Ask me to forget you Don't ask me to be friends After being the one That you took pride in I just couldn't be The one you confide in If it's goodbye for us Never meet again Ask me to forget you Don't ask me to be friends Wanting you so badly Needing you like this How can I just look at the lips I used to kiss If there's someone else Don't let me see him Cause I'll spend my life Wishing I could be him Darling, I beg of you If our love must end Ask me to forget you Don't ask me to be friends Ask me to forget you Don't ask me to be friends Whoa 
up what you think If I sang out a tune Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song And I'll try not to sing out a key I get by with a little help from my friends I get high with a little help from my friends I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends What do I do when my love is away? Does it worry you to be alone? How do you feel by the end of the day? Are you sad because you're on your own? I get by with a little help from my friends. I get high with a little help from my friends. I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends. Do you need anybody? I just need someone to love Could it be anybody? I want somebody to love Now would you believe in a love at first sight? Yes, I'm certain that it happens all the time What do you see when you turn out the lights? I can't tell you but I know it's mine I get by with a little help from my friends I get high with a little help from my friends I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends Do you need anybody? I just need someone to love Could it be anybody? I want somebody to love I get by with a little help from my friends Get high with a little help from my friends I'm gonna try with a little help from my friends Yes, I get by with a little help from my friends With a little help from my friends Like things. I want to tell you my head is filled with things to say when you're need all those words they seem to slip away. Get me you The games begin to drag me down It's alright I'll make you maybe next time around If I seem to act unkind It's only me, it's not my mind That is confusing Thing. I want to tell you I feel hung up and I don't know why I don't mind I could wait forever I got time Sometimes I wish I knew you well Then I could speak my mind Tell you, maybe you'd understand. I want to tell you, I feel hung up and I don't know why. I don't mind. I can wait forever. I got time. I got
should I say she once had been? She showed me her room, here's in the good Norwegian wood. She asked me to stay and she told me to sit anywhere. I looked around and I noticed there wasn't a chair I sat on a rug, biding my time, drinking her wine We talked until two, then, then she said, it's time for bed She worked in the morning and started to laugh I told her I didn't and crawled off to sleep in the bath Then when I woke, I was alone This bird had flown So I lit a fire, yes, and it good Norwegian I saw the written in a solid state The pink moon is on its way And none of ye's gonna stand so tall The pink moon's gonna get ye home oh, And it's a pink moon Yeah, pink moon Solid written and a solid say A pink moon is on its way And none of ye's gonna stand so tall A pink moon's gonna get ye all And it's a pink moon Yeah, pink moon Time has told me you're a rare find, a trouble cure for a troubled mind. And time has told me not to ask for more. For someday our ocean. Find a show So leave the ways that are making me be What I don't want to be Leave the ways that are making me love What I don't want to love And time has told me You came with the dawn so with no footprint, a rose with no thorn. 
your tears they tell me there's really no way of ending your trouble with the things you say and time will tell you to stay by my side to keep on trying The ways that are making me be what you don't want to be. Leave the ways that are making you love what you don't want to love. Time has told me you're a rare find, a trouble cure. troubled mind And time has told me Not to ask for more For someday our ocean Will find its shore There is nothing that's wrong Wanting you to stay here with me Don't you make your Oops First mistake <laughs> We'll edit that out Ready? Alright There is nothing that's wrong Wanting you to stay here with me Don't you got somewhere to go You can make yourself at home and stay with me And don't you ever leave Lay down Sally Rest here in my arms and Don't you think you want someone to talk to Lay down Sally No need to leave so soon I've been trying all night long just to talk to you Sun ain't nearly on the rise We still got the moon and stars above And underneath the velvet sky Love is all that matters Won't you stay with me? And don't you ever leave Lay down Sally Rest here in my arms don't you think you want someone to talk to? Lay down, Sally. No need to be so soon. I've been trying all night long just to talk to you. I long to see the morning light color in your face a dream of leave. Don't you go and say goodbye You can lay your worries down and stay with me And don't you ever leave Lay down Sally Rest here in my arms Don't you think you want someone to talk to Lay down Sally No need to leave so soon I've been trying all night long just to talk to you Ugh. <sighs>
What I want you got It might be hard to handle The flame that learns a candle The candle feeds a flame What I got is full stop My thoughts and dreams are scattered You pull them all together How can I explain? Well you You make my dreams come true On a night when bad dreams become a screamer You mess up with the dreamer And laugh it in the face Twist and shout my way out Wrap yourself around me You ain't the way you found me I'll never be the same Well you You make my dreams come true Down on my daydream No, my sleepwalk should be over But now I know I'm waiting for you You make my dreams come true mm -hmm. I wait for you, girl Heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, growing like a breeze. Country road, take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home down the country road. And all my memories gather round her, miner's lady, stranger to blue water, dark and dusty, painted on the sky, misty taste of moonshine. Teardrops in my eye Country road Take me home To the place I belong West Virginia Mountain mama Take me home Down the country road I hear her voice In the morning now She calls me Radio reminds me of a home far away Traveling down the road I get the feeling I should be home Yesterday, yesterday Country road, take me home To the place I belong West Virginia Mountain Mama, take me home down a country road. Country road, take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home down a country road. Take me home. Down a country road
Bob, it is such an honor to be here at Regent. And I have to say, I don't know if I've ever seen a company quite like this. It seems like such a wonderland that you have created in so many ways. Can you tell me what brought you to this moment? What was the inspiration behind it and the story? I started at Regent along with uh, Paul Helhake. Uh, back in 2001 as a reaction to 9-11. Mm -hmm. So there were tremendous communications failures amongst all the other tragic things that happened that day. And, mm -hmm. and Paul and I set out to create a technology that could, that could be a broadband wireless communications technology, could be rapidly set up in the event that uh, networks were damaged or not working. And we set out to do that and succeeded in doing that. So 9-11, directly inspired the creation of Rage and today and you know we've gone from two guys to you know we're doing business I think about 72 countries wow. now in uh, military mining oil and gas rail ports uh, drones automation robots so lots and lots of different uh, customers and different activities around the world it all came from from 9/11 that is unbelievable what an origin story what is it like being the leader of a global company? Like so there wasn't a grand plan to be international. We, we, uh, you know, we had an opportunity with a company in Australia to put our technology in, in a mine in Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did it. And from there, we spread to like 230 mines around the world. And, and then we've just been opportunistic. I've been fortunate. Uh, Paul has done a great job of building out the technical team. We have great great talent here. It's really a team. Uh, people collaborate, work well together. It's a culture where people react very quickly, uh, move quickly, uh, solve problems in a hurry uh, at a high, high level of quality. So it's a fun place to be around. We're around action-oriented people. And I, I try to, to instill that as the leader, as our culture, which is act fast, move fast. And that has led to uh, some really interesting opportunities globally for us. Mm -hmm. And the global thing, again, you know, once we had the opportunity, then we seized it. And we went from country to country to country, and we continue to, we continue to expand around the world. And in doing so, it gave me uh, an interesting perspective on how interconnected uh, yeah. we are uh, around the world with uh, all types of people. Yeah. It's so interesting to hear you talk about it because the technology is obviously phenomenal. But I also sense from the entire workplace here that the people are also really passionate. And there's also a sense of mischief and fun that I sense here as well. How do you marry those things together as the leader of this? Well, it's it's important to me, that I, and I emphasize that yeah, you know, we expect people to work hard. And if you, you know, if you hire people who are naturally hard workers, that's not that hard a thing to manage, right? I mean, we we look for people who who basically you almost have to work to keep them from working, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're folks that are driven. They're when they have a problem, it's like a quest. You you can't get them to stop. Mm -hmm. and, and and with that, I I think uh, as a CEO, uh, I make an effort to make sure that I I don't forget that these are all people. They're not, they're not just engineers or hardware engineers, software engineer. They're, they're folks with families. They're, they have wives and husbands and kids and mortgages. And, and so, so really, I, when I go home at night, I think about that. I think, right, we're up to 160 employees now. That, that in some sense, as, as the CEO of the company, I, I kind of take ownership of, of all those things in their lives. Mm -hmm. And I know that they work hard. And as a result, I also want them to have fun here, to, mm -hmm. to understand that they're seen as a whole person mm -hmm. here and not just, not just a means to a, an end for a particular customer. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that we're, we're here so short a time that, that in my role that I should help my employees not only succeed at work, but to, to either bring them some joy or somehow create circumstances that we have joy in our life. Yeah. And giving uh, charity is uh, something that it matters too. It's part of reminding the folks here who, you know, in general are doing pretty well that they're still connected yeah. to other people uh, in the world. And so we, we bring in different organizations such as UNICEF to make sure that uh, that we actually don't think about those things, but we act on them as well. I'm curious, what 
was the origin of that huge philanthropic impact that I'm really seeing the company have. Well, I think I think the first connection uh, for me here for us was you know coming through the in the 9-11 and then the, the subsequent wars that followed, you know, we, we would, you know, um, sometimes fly family for a soldier who was terribly wounded in Afghanistan and, and they were flown to Germany and, you know, there wasn't the money to get their family oh, there. Wow. So we would, we would uh, fly, we would uh, provide the funds or, or I would raise the funds to get uh, family back in the States to be able to fly to Germany and, and meet their uh, their injured loved one or yeah. wounded uh, family member. That's not um, something you necessarily think about all the time, but that's so impactful. Well, again, it's, you know, nobody goes off to war by themselves. You know, right. their their spouse or children or whatever, they're, they're sleeping at home, but they're, they're in that fight yeah. too. So, so we thought about that. And then also when the, when the first soldiers were killed, in, American soldiers killed in Iraq, uh, we we did what we could to provide a memorial and uh, some scholarship funds for the wives of uh, those uh, first soldiers killed really in early, I think it was 2003 now, mm -hmm. looking back. So, but that got, started getting me connected yeah. uh, with the, the concept of philanthropy. That was the spark. And then we, over the years, you know, we got connected to a Pennsylvania Wounded Warriors, which is very similar uh, in concept to you guys, 98 cents of every dollar there mm -hmm. goes to a, a Pennsylvania wounded veteran because the whole staff is volunteer. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think, I think we've been helping them for eight years. And then we no dogs left behind. We, bring, we brought dogs home from Afghanistan that soldiers that. had adopted. So, so things like that. And then in Kentucky, you know, we have an office in Kentucky. We're very involved in the community in Kentucky to, uh, I think it's what is it, Operation Pride and uh, and SOAR, Save Our Appalachian Region, and and Unite, which is a drug fight for uh, drug addiction and young people. So when we're in a community, we're in the community. We're just not there to take advantage of things. We're part of what goes on. And so we do it locally, and through UNICEF, we do it in a, in a broader thing because we're part of the broader global community as well. As an individual and as a leader, what's the impact that you want to have in the world? It's can we just, you know, leave it a little better than we found it? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not a, it's, for me, it's, I get, I'm personally a skeptical person about grandific visions. Mm. I, I, I just want to, I want to move the ball, right? Yeah. So if we, if we can make uh, today a little better for somebody than it was yesterday, mm -hmm. then that's a win. Yeah. And then if you do that a lot of days in a row, then you'd be really begin to make a difference. So yeah. for me, I like to see that whatever we get involved with has a, has a measurable uh, impact that we can really see mm -hmm. and that it really helps somebody have their day be better than it was the day before. Yeah, I really love that because looking at problems on a global stage and seeing the depth of the need there can be really demoralizing sometimes because sometimes you can feel, how could this possibly be solved? And I think that we really do have to remember that it's about leaving the world a better place than how you found it. It is, and, the, and you, when you, you can always look at a problem as kind of a mass of unidentified things or people, but the reality is at, at the far end of what we do is an individual. Mm -hmm. It might be a two-year-old individual or a five-year-old individual, or but that's a little person, mm -hmm. you know, with fully, fully fleshed out things going on in their mind, their heart, their dreams are happening. Mm -hmm. So they have to, it's work to see people as individuals. But when you do the work, you realize that you can make a difference for that individual. Mm -hmm. And then if you do that enough, it begins to have a big impact. Right, and when that goes to scale, it's incredible right. what can what can be accomplished. Yeah, I'm curious. Do you, both as CEO and as yourself, do you have a vision for what the path forward is for Regent and also Regent's role as philanthropic leader? Well, the for Regent, I while I always have big ideas, it's yeah. always a blend, right? It's it's. Uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of the fact that, you know, every two weeks we have to make payroll and, you know, mm -hmm. pay the light bill. And so, so it's a balancing act of not having visions and dreams and plans mm -hmm. actually put at risk what you're doing day to day uh, mm -hmm. for people. 
and not just not just for our employees, but we now we have customers, we have thousands and thousands of customers that rely on what we do. So, so we have obligations mm -hmm. daily, uh, internally and externally. At the same time, the world's changing constantly. So part of my job, a big part of my job, is to make sure we anticipate those changes mm -hmm. and uh, and grow in a thoughtful way. So you know and that's what we're doing. We continue every year. We're we're a company that's grown. Uh, very, very consistently for the last 20 years. The goal is to keep getting bigger, bring more uh, product and services uh, to those around the world uh, in a bigger way all the time. When you lose focus, um, you, you often fail. So, so you have to have a focus, you have to have a mission. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and really it starts with your people. Right? You can't do any, I can have the greatest ideas ever and it's not relevant unless uh, others uh, agree and believe and follow. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I try to bring the focus, uh, and the main focus is whatever promises we make to customers or employees or partners, keep your promise, mm -hmm. and that should be the focus. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what you think other leaders in similar positions can be doing to affect change on a global scale. The best thing any leader in a business can do is is succeed while treating his employees well. Mm -hmm. a, a successful company is able to do things. They have resources, mm -hmm. right? The reason Ragent is able to help with UNICEF is because we're a successful company and we're able we're able to uh, make money. Mm -hmm. uh, and it takes tremendous effort by a lot of people here to make that possible. Mm -hmm. And I I think the things that the thing that allows a company to have the resources to help others to mm -hmm. step out beyond what it does daily is is only an expression of how well they do on their core mm -hmm. business. Yeah. So while I would encourage you know everyone to do more, I would first I would first just wish them you know the best wishes and luck and the hard task in front of them, which is to run their day-to-day -day life and business. Do you think that humanitarian organizations can be doing more? What do you what do you think that we should be doing to connect with partners? all over the world and communicate this shared mission that we all have? Uh, you know, again, it's, uh, to me, it always comes down to focus and motivation, right? If, mm -hmm. if, if you keep your eye on what your goal is, in this case, it's feeding and helping children, mm -hmm. right? That's a pretty specific and wonderful goal. If, you, if everybody associated with UNICEF keeps their eye on that ball, mm -hmm. that's how they'll make the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to me, it always comes back to that is, you know, if you're motivated to, to advance your mission, then you probably will. And it's, it's, uh, it's a question always about uh, keeping everybody's eye on the ball, whatever that, whatever that mission is, whatever that ball is for an organization. Yeah. And, and also, I always find it helps to not think in terms of millions, but if you can always bring the camera lens down onto the individual at the end yeah. of the day, it's an individual mm -hmm. that we're attempting to help. People relate to stories. I mean, humans have been telling stories for millions of years, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's the main way that humans communicated up until recently was, yeah. you know, fathers to sons, mothers to daughters, parents to children, you know, family to family, family to neighbors. It was always a spoken storytelling mm -hmm. uh, approach globally. And I, I think I think we respond to that. Mm -hmm. And so whenever whenever and there's universal stories. I mean, nobody nobody that I, I mean, I can imagine wants to see children suffering, crying, or and those things move people. Those stories, but also stories of success. Mm -hmm. You know, wins, um, making the difference, lives, individual lives uh, changed. I, I think. I think that has the greatest impact mm -hmm. on the rest of us is when you see when you see and hear a story of how an individual is affected by what we're trying to do here. Mm -hmm. Try somehow to put a little joy in someone's life. Yeah, I love that. Well, you certainly certainly bring the joy to to Regent. AJ, it was great talking with you today, and I hope to have you back. Honored to be here. Thank you. <music> Playing next on piano is a beautiful, beautiful young girl named Sarah Khan. She's the daughter of one of our employees here. She's magnificent. Wait till you see. The first 
first song I'm going to do is Beautiful Brown Eyes. The second song is Alpine Melody, and I'm going to play it in two octaves. The third song that I'm going to play is Standing in the Needs of Prayer, and it's a prayer song. song is Alouette and it's a French folk song. The next song I'm going to play is Kumbaya in two octaves. The last song I'm going to play is Rock It Away, and I'm going to rock it away. Malnutrition is a deadly thing that can kill, but at the same time it's easy to treat. UNICEF and its partners are working together to save the lives of children. They're providing products that are fortified with micronutrients and all of the things that the body needs to recover from malnutrition. It takes only $200 to, to treat malnutrition and the child can thrive back to life.
Playing next are Brad Fike and Stephen Griggs, both long-term employees at Ragent, talented musicians, and most days pretty good employees as well. Please enjoy them. Watch out now, take care, beware of falling swingers. Dropping all around you. The pain that often mingles in your fingertips. Beware of darkness. Watch out. Now, take care, beware of thoughts that linger Winding up inside your head The hopelessness around you In the dead of night Hurt you Make you sore And what is more That is not what we are here for Watch out now Take care, beware of Dancing down the sidewalks As each unconscious sufferer Wanders aimlessly Beware of Watch out now, take care, beware of greedy leaders They'll take you where you should not go Oh, it's so funny to be seeing you after so long, girl. With the way you look, I understand that you were not impressed. I heard you let that little friend of mine take off your party dress. I'm not gonna get too sentimental. Like those other sticky valentines Cause I don't know if you are loving somebody I only know it isn't mine
Well, I see you got a husband now Did he leave your pretty fingers lying in the wedding cake? But it took all he could take Sometimes I wish that I could stop you from talking When I hear those silly things that you say I think somebody better put out the pink light Cause I can't stand to see you this way Oh, Allison, I know this world is killing you. Oh, Allison, my end is true. My
My secret lair on Skull Crusher Mountain. I hope that you enjoyed your stay so far. I see you met my assistant Scarface. His appearance is quite disturbing, but I assure you he's harmless enough. He's a sweetheart, calls me master, and a way of finding pretty things, bringing them to me. Oh. I'm not surprised that you agree If you can find some way to be a little bit less afraid of me You'd see the voices that control me From inside my head Say I shouldn't kill you yet I made this half pony, half monkey monster to please you but I get the feeling that you don't like it What's with all the screaming? You like monkeys, you like ponies Maybe you don't like monsters so much Maybe I use too many monkeys Isn't it enough to know that I ruined a pony Making a gift for you Oh, and I'm so into you But I'm way too smart for and my henchmen think I'm crazy I'm not surprised that you agree If you can find some way to be a little bit less afraid of me You'd see the voices that control me From inside my head Say I shouldn't kill And so inside my golden submarine While up above my doomsday squad Ignites the atmosphere And all the fools who live their foolish lives May find it quite explosive Well it won't mean as much, as much to me If I don't have you You know it isn't easy living here on Skull Crusher Mountain So maybe you could cut me just a little slack Would kill you to be civil I've been patient, I've been gracious And this mountain is covered with wolves Hear them howling, my hungry children Maybe you should stay and think a little while Think about me and you, oh, and I'm so into you, but I'm way too smart for you, even my henchmen think I'm crazy, I'm not surprised that you agree, if you can find some way to be a little bit less afraid of me, you'd see the voices that control me, from inside my head, say I shouldn't kill I shouldn't kill you yet I shouldn't kill you yet Well, 
I went on with a waitress The way I always do I was gambling in Havana I took a little risk Said lawyers, guns and money Yeah, get me out of this I'm the innocent bystander But somehow I got stuck Between a rock and a hard place And I'm down on my luck Yeah, I'm down on my luck Yeah, I'm down on my luck Now I'm hiding Honduras I'm a desperate man Send lawyers, guns and money Put a cover over the fan Hey! Send lawyers, guns and money Send lawyers, guns, and money. Send lawyers, guns, and money. Finally, I figured out, but it took a long, long time. Now there's a turnabout, maybe because I'm trying. There's been time I'm so confused on my road. We lead to you, just can't turn and walk away. It's hard to say what it is I see in you. Wonder if I'll always be. I'd seen it all Cause it's took a long, long time Oh, but then we'll trip and fall Wondering if I'm blind There's been times I'm so confused On my road We lead to you Just can't turn and walk away Say what it is I see in you Wonder if I'll always be with you Words can say I can do Enough to prove it's all for you Rain comes pouring down Pouring down Falling from the skies From the skies Words without a sound Say what it is I 
seeing you Wonder if I'll always be with you Words can say I can do Enough to prove it's all for you
and the widgets all I learn is still on the line. I am a light and for the county, and I drive the main road, searching in the sun. And the widget's all I love is still on the One of the things that Regent prides itself on is flexibility. In this pandemic, we've had to change the way we do business. As part of the community, it's our job to try as helpful as we can while maintaining Regent as a viable business. We decided to automate most of the aspects of networking that normally require a network engineer. The Emergency Response Rapid Deployment Kit developed by Regent it's designed to extend hospital communications. It can be deployed either inside a field hospital or outdoors. The application supported by this network could potentially be anything from patient care for Wi-Fi, uploading imagery from X-ray. All of these things could be supported through this network. One of the things they've developed here at Regent is a way for a thermal imaging camera to be integrated with a Regent breadcrumb that is doing analytics on people's body temp. With Ragin's Instant Mesh technology, you need to only turn on another radio and the radio just joins the mesh. Ragin has developed a rapid deployment software program. For people who may not be familiar with Ragin technology, this rapid deployment tool will not only allow you to rapidly configure your network, but then you can go back in and you can customize your network. HIPAA security requirements can be met with Wi-Fi client access. Also, we can secure our mesh links per HIPAA standards as well. We can help and we're attempting to. So the donation of, of networking technology have also made our service and support people available to help the networks that we are able to give away. The Regent team got together to figure out new ways to help our technology partners remain productive and helpful to their end users. IT folks, hospital administrators have day jobs. You know, they've got other things to worry about. The Ragent solution, along with our integration and design capabilities at Castle Rock Microwave, allow us to jump in and offload them from that additional stress and issue. We step in, we fill this gap to help identify what those needs are ahead of time. We're gonna get you thinking about these problems you're gonna to have to solve no matter what. And then we'll be ahead of the game when this crisis really takes shape. All of our customers are gonna react in some fashion. How do we anticipate, how do we communicate with them and try to react in our own development? One of the things that Ragent's done to help our technology partners is to create a series of webinars. These webinars cover a wide variety of different subjects. Everything from the oil and gas market and the effects to training webinars. We are applying our technical talent to try to bring another element that could help in the overall problem. There was a mass shortage that we became aware of and we happened to have 3D printing machines. We're currently producing about 20 masks a day. We thought that was just one way we could contribute some of our resources to trying to help. This is such a dynamic environment we're in. The team is resilient, the technology is resilient, and I think it's reflected in how, across the board, we've reacted to this crisis.
like to welcome Andreas Kragland, uh, the Assistant Director of Emergency Coordination Officer for Global Programs at UNICEF, uh, with a particular focus on the Ending the Pandemic campaign. So let's start with what brought you to UNICEF? Uh, how long have you been involved with UNICEF and what, what attracted you in the first place? Sure. So I've been with UNICEF USA for about five and a half years now. Uh, prior to UNICEF, I started working in local programs at the beginning of my career, focused on education and socioeconomic inequality. Um, but little by little, I found myself more interested in the global aspect of work. Uh, I studied global development, worked in some organizations focused on digital education solutions, and really got excited about UNICEF's way of not tackling programs through band-aid solutions, really looking at long-term ways of solving things. So uh, five years later, I've been here and enjoying it any, every minute of it. Fantastic. And, and how far into your UNICEF journey did you did you know was right for you? So one of the most memorable parts of the first week of my um, introduction to UNICEF, I say, uh, you obviously get those uh, welcome over uh, onboarding conversations. A lot of it uh, is just general organizational management. Um, but there was one colleague that stood out and she spoke with such pride about the work, the long-term effort work that UNICEF does and how we support children, that that kind of was like a no-brainer for me. Okay, I'm sticking with this. Uh, I had just moved to New York for this job and I was obviously nervous about it, but she just won me over with, um, in just one week with how uh, strongly she presented uh, the case of why UNICEF matters, that I'm like, okay, there's people that are similarly minded in, uh, working here as well. It was her passion uh, that Real, that really lit the fire for you. Absolutely, it's more than just numbers, the real children that are impacted by our work and she lived, breathed and, uh, and just experienced it. So knowing that there were like-minded people, just I was sold. All right, so our, our activity here in our event is, is about raising money for UNICEF. Can you tell us some of the ways that money is useful to you as you, as you work to satisfy your mission? Of course. Uh, well, currently, of course, one of our ways is uh, to use the money to ensure equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines, treatments, and tests. Uh, thankfully, we've had partners such as RAGEN that have helped us uh, strengthen that and reduce that amount of inequity that there are in those COVID tools. We know that there's still uh, inequity around the world in how those tools reach different populations. Uh, but that's one of the main areas where we're trying to solve uh, to fight that uh, and end the pandemic, really. Um, in addition to that, we're also continuing to do the work that we've done for decades, uh, build stronger healthcare, nutrition, education systems, and work to ensure that every child has, uh, is, is able to live a long and healthy life. Uh, so those are kind of the two things that we're focusing on, not just ending the pandemic, but ensuring that we don't lose sight of what we've been building for you uh, many decades. In addition to money, what, in your experience, what are some other ways that individuals can help or contribute to the, to the mission, the core mission? historic mission and also the end of the pandemic mission. Sure. Um, so and as you mentioned, in addition to financial <clears throat> resources, we always recommend for folks to check out uh, act.unicefusa.org. Uh, there we have all the advocacy uh, messaging and all the different advocacy work that we're doing. Um, we encourage the public to have a loud and clear voice about different child-friendly policies that not only in the U.S. can be done, but also globally. So that's a great resource to check out. And there's different spots for whatever costs interest you the most. Hey, and, and during the week, as a, tell me a little bit about your average week. What, you know, what are the things you do and what are the things you, you find most fulfilling as you go through the week? That's a great question. Uh, just part of context. So what I do is essentially monitor different emergencies around the world uh, and ensure that our colleagues, partners know what's happening to children in those emergencies. Um, to be honest, at the beginning of the pandemic and even as early as the second uh, surge of COVID in India, those updates that I was sharing, they weren't great news. Uh, they were kind of um, saddening to hear everything that was happening around the world. But I can tell you that little by little, as we got uh, closer to this time now, we're seeing so much positive news about the distribution of vaccines that now that task that I, at the beginning of the year was sometimes challenging to share it's now becoming something uh, great to share. Each week we're seeing vaccine rollouts um, increase more and more. I think we've 
surpassed 144 countries we've distributed vaccines to. So being able to do that in a weekly basis and share that good news uh, is really uh, great and see the fruit of our labor uh, being uh, shined is really great. Given all the all the countries that are being impacted by this, where has UNICEF brought you personally uh, in your in your ability to travel and visit with with folks related to UNICEF around the world? So obviously, many of us have been uh, sitting in our households for about two years now, so I haven't done much traveling. Uh, but before that, I was uh, fortunate enough to travel to El Salvador um, and uh, really meet with uh, program officers there that were really in task, uh, in task with a very challenging situation, which was coordinating and ensuring that children receive services throughout a whole migration route through different countries. So I was able to meet with different programmatic officers from Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, El Salvador, and understand how they're working together uh, to ensure that across the whole uh, migration route, children are protected from bad actors and have the services that they need should they go through the migration routes that they were going through. Uh, so that was really uh, impressive to me to see uh, our colleagues at work. Okay, and as we as we focus on the end the pandemic campaign, what are what are UNICEF's and what are your short term goals? Uh, well, I think you just said it yourself. It's really ending the pandemic, and I think that's uh, easier said than done. Um, as I mentioned, part of it is um, increasing the equity for vaccines, treatments, and tests, but it's also uh, ensuring that we just don't build the systems to where they were before. It's building them in a stronger way so we could be prepared for the next pandemic um, and ensuring that we don't lose the gains that we, we've gained uh, for the last uh, few decades. And uh, as, I mean, it's been a challenging time, you know, with the with, uh, shutdowns around the world, inability to travel, tough to meet people face to face. In addition to those, are there other barriers uh, to you and UNICEF regarding uh, achieving your mission? And what can be done uh, to uh, to deal with them or overcome them? Sure. So uh, a lot of the issues that we've had during the pandemic is um, really adapting our programming in a way that's safe. Uh, so that includes everything from increasing the amount of uh, protective equipment that healthcare workers have to ensuring, for example, in nutrition, there's what we call the middle of arm circumference band, which we use to measure the arms of children that may be malnourished. Um, so a lot of training went into showing mothers and community, uh, communities how to do that themselves. So there wasn't as much potential of transmission. So those are like on the ground challenges that we're experiencing. There's also supply challenges. We know that vaccines and treatments and tests are in huge demand. So we're experiencing the same supply challenges that everybody else is experiencing, but we're hoping and we're seeing now with new supply forecasts that the number of vaccines that are available thanks to those donations and contributions uh, is going up significantly in this fourth quarter of this year and the first quarter of next year. Uh, so there are challenges, but we're slowly uh, picking away at them. Okay. Um, how about, how about uh, one or two just personal stories of, of somebody individually in this, in this uh, career that you've had there and something that sticks out that, you know, as an individual story that you remember and had an impact on you? Um, so we see various stories come out weekly from colleagues around the world that are really impacting. One that I felt was at the crux of what UNICEF does and really has such a big ripple effect uh, was that really our first uh, COVAX delivery, um, it was to Ghana. And at the beginning of uh, the pandemic, there really wasn't any direct flight from Mumbai, where most of our vaccines were, to Ghana. So there was this 72-hour coordination that in which there was a plane that was flying from Shanghai to Mumbai, UNICEF coordinated with an air flight to make sure that that uh, flight could be stopped in Dubai to pick up the, uh, sorry, Mumbai to uh, pick up the vaccines and then go to Dubai to pick up syringes and then have another plane go to Ghana to deliver them all in 72 hours. And that had a ripple effect of giving 6 million Ghanaians uh, vaccines in just 72 hours going from zero to 6 million. So it's a very human story, I think, in not just the coordination and the work it takes, but also the ripple effect it could have on other humans and other neighbors in our world. Very, very powerful uh, Im implication and impact uh, from that. So I'd like to thank uh, you, Andreas, for meeting with us today and taking the time to uh, help us all understand the importance of the UNICEF 
end the pandemic campaign. So thank you for your time and look forward to talking to you and meeting you again in the future. Thank you, Bob. And thank you to all of Ray John. Have a great day. Playing next from Cabo San Lucas is Robert Arias. My name is Robert Arias. I'm from Process Instrumentation and Measurement Services. I'm a Ragent Technologies channel partner from Houston, Texas. Today we're at Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. I have my friends here with us. They're going to back me up on the phone called Margaritaville. Here we go. Watching the sun bathe All those tourists covered with oil Striving my sixth street All my front four swing Smell those shrimp there beginning introduce Jake Morelli and his wife, Don T, who just recently played for Ragent at our Veterans Day event. Jake led a band called Jake Morelli and the World's Coolest Band. I think you're going to enjoy Jake and his wife, Don T. Please pay close attention to what they're singing and then donate on behalf of the children.
They say the grass is always greener on the other side. Not true. Don't believe it. Who says there is one road ahead? Who says Winds of fate blow you through If I go back and change it Spin it around, arrange it The road I walk on is the road less traveled
have Cliff Cole returning with a group called Full Circle. Please enjoy Cliff and his friends Andy Finkel and Jansen Wendell in Full Circle, playing on your behalf and ours. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We are the Full Circle Band. Um, the reason why we are called the Full Circle Band is because I've known Jansen for like 30 years or something. Yeah. And then Jansen's known Andy for like 30 years or something. And then I met Andy when I started working for Regent. So we kind of figure it's a full circle. Yes. So here we are. We're going to be playing primarily old time music, but we're going to take that Take that out a Take little. Take liberties. Take some liberties, yes. Mm -hmm. This is called the Seneca Square Dance. That is um, all pure fun. So, well, Jansen is going to pick up his mandolin, and we are going to play a tune called "The Dark Hollow," written by a man named Bill Browning. This has been covered by a lot of people. There's a bluegrass band, fairly well known, called The Seldom Scene. They covered it. Um, I know it from David Bromberg, and also The Grateful Dead. Yeah. Okay, ready guys? All right. One, two, ready, play. I'd rather be in some dark hollow Where the sun no longer shines Than to be here alone Knowing that you're gone Cause me to lose my mind So blow me far on down the track I'm going away I'm leaving today I'm going 
but I ain't coming back. Take it, Jen. In some dark hollow Where the sun refused to shine Than to be in some big city In a small room with you all mine So blow your whistle, freight train Take me far on down the track I'm going, but I ain't coming back So blow your whistle, freight train Take me far on down the track I'm going away leaving today I'm going but I ain't coming back watch out I'm going away I'm leaving today I'm going but I ain't coming back <laughs> well thank you that was a lot of fun um, let's see, what are we playing next? Oh, next we're going to go to Ireland, and we're going to play an Irish jig. Uh, this is one called the Kesh jig, and uh, I looked it up, just trying to find information on it. It's got all kinds of different names, but uh, basically it honors the village of Kesh in, um, that's in somewhere in Ireland. I, if I was really good, I could tell you what county it is. But <laughs> So if you, uh, you may have noticed on TV there's a, an ad for Ireland to visit Ireland, and uh, they use that tune. Oh, the catch tune. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Go ahead, take it away there, Jansen. Okay. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Well, um, please uh, give to the UNICEF cause that uh, Ragent is is donating our time and energy um, to make this all happen. And uh, UNICEF is a great organization that does a lot of um, good things all around the world. So uh, please give generously. Uh, we're going to do Sadie at the Back Door, uh, which is written by Jerry... Canote. Canote, thank you. I would have said it wrong if I hadn't been for Andy. Um, and uh, this is one of those tunes that sounds like an old-time tune, but it actually is uh, modern. It's modern. You can actually see Jerry Canote playing it, playing the tune on YouTube if you look it up. He's a banjo player, right? Uh, I think it was written as a banjo player, as a banjo I don't tune. Know. I've seen it as a fiddle tune. Oh, okay. But uh, I heard it was a banjo tune. But since we don't have any banjo players around, <laughs> we're just going to have to do with uh, hammer dulcimer and violin and guitar. How about that? So. Right, and Sadie is refers to a cat named Sadie. And the story is that he let Sadie out the front door, and then right away Sadie came to the back door. So it's Sadie at the back door. Take it away. Well, you can see that this music is a lot of fun, and uh, this is the kind of music that um, they played all throughout the Appalachian regions um, before the radio and you know electricity was invented, and people would play this on their back porches or in the living rooms and barn dances and all kind of stuff, and that's what, that's the tradition of this type of music. Um, so we're going to do a, a waltz. Um, this is uh, called. Uh, the, this is called Midnight on the Water, and um, I'm going to start it off. Okay.
Okay, well, we're going to finish up with a tune written by Jay Unger, and this one's called Around the Horn. Uh, Jay Unger, you you may have heard, he has a, a much more famous tune uh, called Ashokan Farewell, which he written he wrote for his uh, Ashokan camp, which is up in the Catskills, and it was the last song that they play at the fiddle camp uh, and all the other camps now. But uh, it was used in the PBS uh, documentary, uh, The Civil War. And right. that's, so he got a, it's the song that paid his rent, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> Continues to. But this is another one, another great one, but he's a great fiddle player, right? Yes, yep. and a great composer. And I'm going to let uh, Jansen just uh, take this away. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. We are the Full Circle Band, and please give generously to UNICEF. Thank you very much. Thank you. Despite the challenges posed by COVID, we continue to see amazing economic progress across the Commonwealth week after week. We know Kentucky's time is now, our future is now, and we have a number of really exciting announcements that will lift up every part of the Commonwealth today. We're gonna to start by talking about Ragent Corporation, a cutting edge technology company that provides kinetic mesh wireless networks, which are used by everybody from the military to the NFL. It allows the use of mobile communications in some of the world's harshest and most challenging environments. Based in Pennsylvania, Ragent has a presence and has had a presence in Moorhead since 2015. Today, Ragent is taking its commitment to the Commonwealth to a new level, and we could not be happier. I'm happy to welcome virtually today Ragent CEO Robert Scanna, who is joining us via video for more. Welcome, Robert. Governor, thank you for including us today. 
Thank you for being here with us. Um, we're very excited today. We're having a, a, a grand opening and a groundbreaking uh, ceremony at our new Moorhead facility. We we have just uh, in the last year or so bought a 48,000 square foot building here in Moorhead, and we're completing the build out of the first 15,000 square feet. Uh, we've been in Moorhead uh, for five years and hired almost everybody from Moore in our, our employees, which are about 30 right now, from Moorhead State University and more than half of those from the Space and Science Center. And that Space and Science Center has been really, really a gem for us to find at Ragit Corporation. Um, those young people, as you know, uh, hand build satellites, uh, one of which in, in the next six to 12 months will be going to the moon. And those employees, uh, when we hire them, I mean, they come to work on a Monday and they're, they're contributing on Tuesday. They're very smart, very well trained. They have the work ethic that I find common to uh, this area of Kentucky. And it's really been great for us. And I, I want to give you, a, you, you mentioned something about our military experience. And I thought, I thought you would enjoy this, this anecdote. It's an important anecdote. Uh, a few weeks ago, during the evacuation of the Kabul airport in Afghanistan, the uh, Taliban uh, launched several rocket attacks uh, on the folks at the airport, including American citizens and soldiers. And the U.S. Army had deployed a system called CRAM, Counter Rocket Artillery and Mortar. And that system utilizes uh, radios uh, built by Ragent in Moorhead. And that system successfully performed live under fire, shot the rockets down, and, and saved lives uh, during that evacuation. And uh, I just thought that uh, the folks uh, watching should, should uh, understand uh, and, and know that that technology was, was built and assembled by Kentuckians uh, from, from Eastern Kentucky. So I thought I'd pass that along. Uh, additionally, well, uh, as go, go ahead, Governor. I was going to say we we couldn't be more excited, and we know uh, the number of fields that that you all work in. That through Moorhead uh, working with you, we've got an impact all over the country and all over the world. That's correct. We are we're doing our products now used in sixty eight countries. And, and almost all of our assembly now is done here in Moorhead, and we're planning on expanding. It's my goal to take this facility from, from 30 people uh, to 100 people over the next few years, and we'll be adding uh, folks with all kinds of backgrounds from manufacturing and assembly up to uh, artificial intelligence research and even genetics research as we, uh, as we branch into healthcare uh, as well as part of our expansion here in Kentucky. Well, we are so proud that you have chosen to call Kentucky uh, one of your homes. We can't wait to help you expand further. Congratulations. Thank you, Governor. I appreciate the time. So, uh, Robert will be uh, doing the groundbreaking uh, in about 25 minutes uh, with Rocky, who is up there because we couldn't have something in Moorhead without Rocky uh, being there. But this is a cutting edge company. This is truly when we talk about aerospace and jobs of the future, exactly what we are looking for. And, and they have partnered with one of our uh, universities in a very specific area that's one of the best in. I think this is just a great story about where we're going uh, and, and how higher education is helping us to, to get there. Again today, um, the leaders at Regent are cutting the ribbon on the new 48,000 square foot facility in Moorhead. A uh, high tech company provides equipment and services to a range of sectors, military, mining, public safety, agriculture, and a number of others. So in 2020, uh, I'd announced that the company would create 26 jobs in Rowan County with their expansion. But today, as Robert mentioned, that figure has grown to over 100 jobs with approximately $2 million in investment. It is a significant expansion, and we thank this company. We thank Robert for his faith in Kentucky. He is here uh, a bunch. We consider him one of our own. Next, we'll be listening to James Valenti. Uh, James, 
when it, when he starts to sing, usually as you as you look around the room, people's jaws drop because he has one of the most astonishingly powerful voices that has ever emanated from a human. He's really something to listen to. James uh, sung opera at the Metropolitan Opera in New York City, La Scala in Milan, uh, Royal Opera House in London, and now on behalf of the children of the world and to help UNICEF raise money to end the pandemic, we have James Valenti. Hi, everybody. James Valenti here. Um, I'm an opera singer and I've uh, had the pleasure of performing uh, a number of times at Regent and I'm delighted to offer a couple selections here for the uh, the Regent UNICEF World Music Event 2021. I thought I'd sing a couple um, a couple Italian songs. I, I perform these often at some of your events and um, I'm not a pianist but I can play a little bit and I'm going to sing um, two songs for you. I'm going to sing Torna a Sorriento, and this is a Neapolitan song, and uh, the words are, look how beautiful the ocean is, it inspires such emotions, um, and you tell me you're leaving this land of love, why, why do you leave, come back to Sorrento so that I can live. <clears throat> Dio mare quanto è bello, spira tanto sentimento, come tu aghi di mente, cascetate vai furna, guarda qua chi su ciardino, siente se sti giuri arance, No profuma così fino, d'intoccare se ne va. E tu dici a par tuo addio, da lontare da stucare, da sta terra dell'amore, vieni a cuore non turna. That's the first one. The second piece I'm going to sing for you is um, the ubiquitous pop song from Andrea Bocelli. Uh, it was known in the United States as Time to Say Goodbye, but it actually doesn't mean time to say goodbye. The Italian is Conte Partiro, and it means with you I will go to places unseen. I want to see it all. I with you. Io con te. <clears throat> All right, so. Quando sono solo sogno l'orizzonte mancan le parole. Si lo so che non c'è luce in una stanza quando manca il sole. Se non ci sei tu con me, con me. 
Le finestre mostra tutto il mio cuore che hai acceso, chiudi dentro me la luce che ha incontrato per strada. Con te partirò. Paesi che non ho mai venuto vissuto con te, adesso si vivrò con te, partirò su navi per mari che io la so. Vivrò con te, partirò su navi per mari che io lo so, non esistono più. So, uh, Wendy J, give us a little bit of your background. Well, I am a member of the uh, Philadelphia Committee for UNICEF. And, and for how long have you been doing that? Uh, for about four years. What drew you to the board and, uh, and to UNICEF? Uh, I, actually, I was asked by Jennifer Paradise uh, to join. Uh, she's a friend of mine, and she asked me to join, and I was uh, I mean, delighted to be included. It's a lot of fun. Good group. Since you've joined, what types of things have you participated in? Uh, mostly fundraisers, mm -hmm. uh, pulling together different ideas and different groups of people. Um, it's easy to get on a committee. You don't have to have anything in particular. So it's easy to help. It's easy to help. It really is easy to help. And you'll be surprised how much your friends will want to help you once you join. Uh, how have you seen COVID impact uh, your ability to participate and raise money for COVID? Well, you've been a great help, Bob, and a great support during COVID. I have to say that was, uh, um, you know, great uh, for us last year that you stepped up. Um, but I think people in general really want to uh, contribute, and UNICEF is a great way. You don't need any special credentials to be part of our committee, other than a love of children, all children. And have you, uh, in, in this experience over the last few years, have you had the chance to travel or be part of uh, broader UNICEF activities? Uh, well, right now, I'm uh, currently on the committee that helps with the snowflake ball mm -hmm. in New York City. And uh, it was touch and go for a while, whether it would be an in-person event. Uh, it is scheduled for the end of November. So we're looking forward to that, but it will be hybrid. And given the relationships and the connections you've made with UNICEF, is this, is this something you're looking to continue over the next few years? To figure out where you want to donate your money, I think is you know a question that you have to kind of sit with for a while. And to me, UNICEF was a no-brainer mm -hmm. because it's for children, all children. Who wouldn't want to help you know, a little innocent child? So I, I, I think it just was easy for me to decide that this was a group that I could you know, go on with. And the, the main goal this year is to raise money to help uh, end the pandemic. And uh, what, what are your views on that uh, from the perspective of as a donor and an organizer with UNICEF? Well, a lot of uh, children, um, you know, throughout the world were unable to go to school because of the pandemic. And UNICEF really stepped up and participated in uh, providing uh, internet for children, and they provided meals for kids that were skipping their meals due to, you know, missing school, and uh, and and affection. I mean, you got to feel like somebody, you know, cared about you. A lot of these kids have nobody, and you know, the UNICEF staff that are out in the field really connect with the kids. And uh, so, to me, um, I don't know how what they would have done without it.
So next from Moorhead City, Kentucky is Ray McLean. Take it away, Ray. All of us at Moorhead State University and the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music are proud to partner with Regent and Bob Skeena in this benefit for UNICEF. One. Exchange students that are with us this year from Hungary. They're, uh, they're, they're great artists, they're Hungarian folk musicians, and the young lady who's going to sing right now is Anna Tork. The young lady playing the fiddle is from the state of South Carolina. Her name is Haley King, and the young man playing the fiddle is from uh, Transylvania, and his name is Attila Deju. 
We're gonna play a little medley for y'all, and uh, it's gonna be a mixture of two songs, one of which is a traditional bluegrass tune called Monroe's Hornpipe. And one is a Hungarian traditional dance tune.
the young lady playing the five string banjo is from Rising Sun, Indiana. Her name is Kendall Potter. And I'm gonna sing a song written by Bill Clifton called The Little Whitewashed Chimney. We're very glad that a couple of the students' musical mentors are visiting from Hungary. Uh, Jolti and Juri are here, and uh, I've known some of them for uh, many years as they've been involved in the European World of Bluegrass and the International Bluegrass Music Association, and we've played music together over years, and we're very glad they're here with us now. Jolti and Juri. Thank you, Raymond. Great to be here. Thank you so much.
haven't yet introduced the young man playing the bass. His name is Lorenz Mohachi, and the gentleman who has been playing the violin, the viola, and now he's going to be playing the cymbalum. His name is Aaron Rostash. We're going to do Festival Waltz, Kenny Baker's song.
Of course, our good friend Bob Skeena is Italian, and there is an Italian tarantella that uh, we always play for Bob, um, and we hope that he likes it. So Attila and Lurens and I are going to do this uh, Neapolitan tarantella, especially for Bob Skeena. and started singing Wayfaring Stranger. Yeah, actually, you and the guys found out it is really similar to your famous Hungarian tune called Gloomy Sunday, so the next number will be a melody of Wayfaring Stranger and Gloomy Sunday.
I'm just going over All of us at the Kentucky Center for Traditional Music are so pleased to have the opportunity to take part in this, uh, in this telethon that uh, Regent Corporation is doing for UNICEF. We feel very fortunate to be included. Thank you. Well, Haley, what are we going to end with? The last tune we're going to play for y'all today is Crazy Creek. One, two,
unreasonable. It's how you have to be if you want to change things. Relentless. Tenacious. The world's children need people like that. People who see impossible as incentive to try harder. Who find one good reason to keep going in the face of a thousand reasons to stop. So, shout out to the hardcore. Because big problems need big solutions from big game players. You know the type. The determined. The persistent. The unreasonable. UNICEF, in more than 190 countries and territories, we never give up until the rights of every child are protected. Are you with us? UNICEF, for every child. As our benefit comes to an end, please listen to one final set from City Rhythm. And don't forget to donate.
in the world was poor little Ann. As sweet a young child that you'd find. Her parents had gone to their final reward, leaving their baby behind. Did you hear that poor little girl? Was only nine years of age when her mother and dad went away. Still, she bravely worked at the one thing that she knew to make a few pennies a day. She made artificial flowers, artificial flowers. Flowers for ladies of fashion to wear. She made artificial flowers, artificial flowers, fashioned from Annie's despair. With paper, shears, wire, and wax, she fashioned each tulip and mum. As snowflakes drifted in to her tenement room, her baby little fingers grew numb from making artificial flowers. Artificial flowers, flowers for the ladies of fashion to wear. She made artificial flowers. Artificial flowers fashioned from Annie's despair. Oh, they found little Annie all covered with ice, still clutching her poor frozen shears. And amidst all the blossoms she had fashioned by her. Garland of genuine flowers and no more artificial flowers. No way, no artificial flowers. Flowers that the ladies of high society would wear. No more artificial flowers. No way, no artificial flowers. Fashion from Annie. from Annie's despair. Some of these days you're gonna miss me, honey. Some of these days you're gonna feel so lonely You're gonna miss my hugging You will miss my kissing You'll even miss me, baby When I'm gone away And I hope you feel lonely I just love Kinda always had your way And if you leave me You know it's gonna grieve me You're gonna miss your brown eyed daddy Some of these days I said some of these days You're gonna miss me Honey, I'm talking about the days when you feel all alone. You will miss.
miss my hugging You're gonna miss all my kissing You leave and miss me, baby When I'm long gone away And I hope you feel lonely So, and this brings the second annual World Music Benefit, hosted by Ragin, to a close. I'd like to thank everybody who helped this year, all the musicians, uh, the interviewees, the volunteers, people around the world that stepped up to write checks, everybody involved. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to help end the pandemic and help children around the world. On behalf of UNICEF, thank you.